light came on, so I knew it was overheating. And I was getting to some of the hills, I wasn't making it, and people behind me were pushing me up them. And we got to rock one of the last rock gardens, and Hannah got me there, and I nursed it back, and I'm so happy to get second. Because <laughs> getting towed in is not fun. <laughs> I'll take a second any day. And this is really slick ground, you know, it's rocky and uh, a little gravelly, but it's going to polish off. And I think if it rains, it's going to get wet. I don't think it's going to get real muddy. I think it's going to get wet. How you feeling? Feeling good. Yeah? Yep. So podium's good. Oh, yeah, that's the plan, man. All healed up, ready to roll. Feels good. I like it. I need. We need more of this. I'm trying to do my rain dance, you know? You know what? If I if we get another tally at the end of the year, awesome. That's what I get paid to do. And if I don't, I don't have anything to prove. So I'm just gonna go be safe, healthy, take it to the last round if needed. Slick. It is. It started to rain pretty hard there a couple times, but just a consistent like. I thought maybe after the first lap we'd get back down to dry dirt, but there wasn't any. It wasn't there, and it it wasn't muddy, but boy was it slick. So yeah, just a good day. Uh, that was uh, three very experienced riders that that come from very slick places on earth did very well today. I'm not not at all surprised, and the young guys had clutch problems. Imagine that. So. Old guys track, I like it. You said it, you said at the beginning of the race you were hoping for the more older guys to kind of perform yeah. they did. Yeah, 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 everyone did good. Obviously, 
you know, they're significantly younger than me. I was hoping to see, you know, McGill and Borch and uh, McClure up there, which they probably were early, but, yeah, just glad, it, glad I was up there. That's all that matters. So, uh, yeah, it was a good race. Fans are going to get an awesome show. I know Bryson's going to be super tough all year. And awesome to see Cole have a good ride, too. So, you know, hats off to all three uh, you know, all three of us. It was, you, can, you can tell that we did what we need to do over the summer. Oh, you know, it was good, but uh, I think as I heard Walker say, Man, it was like an ice skating rink. You know, uh, we, we had a good start. We rode up there for a little bit. Not sure what happened, but, you know, Walker put in a little charge there, got a gap. I think uh, for a while there it was Hunter and Bryson behind me. We kind of were battling. Um, Bryson got me about twice there. You know, we gave him a shot. And, you know, I was like, we have something open up towards the end of the race. You know, I'm sorry, but, you know, I need points too, and we're going to take it. And, uh, he messed up about a couple corners before the finish here. And, you know, I went outside. He kind of bobbled in the berm, and we – kind of came together a little bit but I had about a half quad on him and ended up getting the lead and knew if we just didn't spin out coming into the finish we should have it and uh you know I'm pretty sure we made up actually some really good points today I'm not quite sure who's fourth and fifth and you know so forth but uh all I know is uh the points I needed made up make up those guys were behind me I appreciate it oh yeah I uh, broke my head on my butt a little bit at first and then I started clicking and then uh well I got to the rear wheels of Hunter and I was having a little bit of trouble getting around them after we pitted. I knew Walker was getting away, and uh, I was able to get around Cole and Hunter, I think, by the three. And then I wrecked right before we got to the FMF power point. Cole got back behind me, and then I knew at that point I just need to finish second. And then literally right before we came out into the woods for the finish line, I stuffed it into a berm and just gave Cole second, and I just bummed at myself for that one. I was okay with getting second today with the rain and the conditions and everything, but give up a second like that like a bonehead move i'm i'm a little a little bummed at myself so it's okay we're all right yeah we'll be all right so it's just a we're happy to get through a mud race like today it was slick the last i've got really really slick i hope the dirt bikes if they don't clear up at all they're not going to have fun at all tomorrow so it's it's pretty dang slick so other than that we've got a lot of positives next one's home race in athens so uh get back at it hopefully it's dry straight up racing and uh we can just uh run some hot laps and keep our head up and keep rolling forward thanks wow, mountaineer gncc podium mountaineer gncc Welcome to America's premier off-road racing championship, the 2022 Grand National Cross Country Series presented by Specialized at AMA National Championship. This is round number 11, the Kanati Tires Baroque GNCC as we welcome you to the Russell Family Farm in Millfield, Ohio at Sunday Creek Raceway, our second stop here as we stopped earlier this spring for the John Pinton GNCC and of course coming back here in the early part of fall, the first weekend of fall as we kick it off and only three more rounds of GNCC racing left to go and championships are heating up to say the least. Now, as we take a look around this facility, things are looking great weather-wise. We are on tap for great racing here today. Did get some early morning showers, something that we weren't expecting, but honestly, it may have done the track a little bit of a favor. As uh, we look back a couple of weeks ago, Wow, what a uh, great run we had there. The long summer break, of course, coming off of that uh, that horrible crash and that one that totally destroyed his ATV at Snowshoe GNCC. Bryson Neal was still in the points lead as we headed into this one, but with the momentum of the win heading into the summer, I know Walker Fallon was hoping to strike while the iron was hot and maybe gain a few more points and chip away at that points lead that Bryson Neal has of over him heading into this 
latter half of the season. And, of course, you have a lot of other key players to throw in there. Cole Richardson, and, of course, you can't count out the young Hunter Hart just yet either as he is a formidable opponent and one to keep an eye on. And then you've got your uh, always the mainstays, Jared McClure's and, and, of course, Adam McGill's and everybody throwing their hat in the ring. But as this day wore on, it became basically... Well, almost the Walker Fowler show as he got off to a traditional Walker Fowler start and was able to gap the rest of the field, held on to a comfortable gap, didn't overdo it so much, but what was going on behind him was where the real racing action was. Bryson Neal had to find his way up through and into the number three spot. Finally gotten around the 733 of Cole Richardson, but with just a few turns left to go, went wide in a turn and Cole Richardson was able to get back around and take away the second place position, which all of a sudden tightened things up. We've got a couple of points that separate these riders, but when you look at the big picture with three rounds of racing left to go, a virtual deadlock tie for this Grand National Cross Country ATV Championship. And folks, I tell you, hate to overuse the word. You may have heard it overused a few years ago, but as Jared Bolton and I were talking about, this season is nothing short of epic. That is for sure. And it is going to continue to be that way. And of course, with weather conditions today, a little overcast, a little sun, but the perfect weather as far as temperatures are concerned with temperatures right around 60, 65 degrees. Um, and again, maybe some rain showers again this afternoon, but likely not. But they were unexpected this morning as well, but it did nothing but good things to the track. And speaking of the track, let's check in with Jared Bolton gives us a uh, full look at what we have to see coming up over the course of the next two hours. Jared? All right, thanks, guys. Welcome back to Sunday Creek Raceway. This time it's the Burr of GNCC. Just because we were here earlier in the spring for the John Kenton doesn't mean this is the same track. Uh, there, not only is there a direction reverse, uh, we've incorporated a lot of different sections of trail. We've got some stuff that hasn't been used for a long time, uh, some different technical stuff. And then for the guys in the afternoon bike race, man, they are in for a treat. We're going to use that John Penton section, but it's the longest it's ever been. It's probably the toughest it's ever been. Four and a half miles of nice technical ups and downs, off cameras, everything you can think of. For the ATV guys, they've got their own challenges. They've got a few sections of the afternoon that the morning's not running. Give them some technical stuff. It's going to be some great racing with the championship battle heating up. This is an awesome track for the, both of those top two guys, Walker Fowler and Bryce Neal. Both excel here. Uh, those guys are going to be on top of their game. They're going to make for some great racing. Back to you guys. Well, thanks a lot, Jared. And with that, the stage is set. We're ready to go racing, so stick around. GNCC Racing will continue after this. We all have our reasons to accomplish, to work hard. We share a common goal, to be the best. Keep fighting, put in the work, never take the easy way. Your drive and determination fuels our passion. This Racer TV broadcast is brought to you by Specialized. Specialized Turbo E-Bikes. It's you, only faster. And by Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Get ready. Oh, the light. 
Well, there you have it, folks, and our stage is nearly set as we welcome everyone along the World Wide Web at RacerTV.com for our live stream here from Millfield, Ohio. And, folks, it is time to meet our starting lineup. That's right, folks. Our top riders of the XC1 Pro Class getting ready to take to the starting line here today. And as they do, they go in accordance to their finish and their standings in points through the first 10 rounds of the Grand National Cross Country Championship. And rolling to the line first today, riding aboard the number 241, hailing from Bidwell, Ohio, on a Magna One Motorsports backed Yamaha. Six win to his credit, Bryson Neal. Rolling to the line second today in points. He is a seven-time GNCC champion and just two points shy of the points lead with a two-win race win, race win win streak. The number one, hailing from Rogers, Ohio, on the WFR GBC Fly Racing Factory Yamaha, Walker Fowler. Rolling to the line, third today in points, riding aboard the number two from Newfield, New York, of the original Formula 88 Ithaca Recreation Maxxis Fly Racing Yamaha, Hunter Hart. He rolls to the line today, fourth in points, riding aboard the number 712 from Waxhaw, North Carolina, on the Pierce Performance GBC Action Off-Road Activate Waste Solutions Yamaha, John Galata Jr. Fifth at point, fresh off a second place finish just two weeks ago. Riding aboard the 733 from Edinburgh, Pennsylvania. On a Gatter Nissan, Kenda Action Off-Road Richardson Racing Yamaha. The Cold Train, Cole Richardson. Rolling to the line, six today in points. Riding aboard the number seven from Windsor, New York on a fly racing GBC Tires Yamaha. Seven of He rides aboard the number three. He is seven in points. From Casca, Pennsylvania on the JMR GBC Elka Moose Racing Back Honda. The Sneaky State. Jared McClure! Rolling to the line next. Eighth at points. Riding aboard the number 521 from Waverly, West Virginia. On an overtired Moose Racing Parts Unlimited Honda. Adam the Gator McGill! Up next. He is ninth in points. He rides aboard the number six from Akron, Ohio, on American Racing BNR Motorsports GBC Tires Yamaha. Josh Merritt. And champion points riding aboard the number nine, a six-time Grand National Cross Country Champion. With 75 wins to his credit, out of Sunbury, Pennsylvania, on a CBR GBC Action Off Road Fly Racing M Doyle Yamaha, Chris Forrest. To the line next, he rides aboard the number 703 from Petersburg, Indiana, on an Action Off Road Maxis Abney Racing Yamaha, Austin Abney. Up next, celebrating his 27th year as a TNCC Pro and likely his final. Featured on the event t-shirt here today from Aurora, Ohio on the number 15 GBC Fly Racing Factory Yamaha, Johnny G, Johnny Gallagher. And last is early not least. From Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, on the Bulletproof Doors, b &R Motorsports, Sins Graphics, Yamaha, Ronnie Rush. 
And that, ladies and gentlemen, your starting lineup for this, the Kanati Tires Burr Oak GNCC. And as our riders find their way onto the starting line and pick their start positions on this starting line, our stage is nearly set. And we are almost ready to go racing. But before we can get that underway, my friends, we ask our trusted DJ and fellow fill-in here this weekend, Mixed Master Murphy, as he boards the R-Max 1000 Yamaha. Mixed Master Murphy, remove the meat. That's right. The Monster Energy Activation Transport, a.k.a. Meat, makes its way off the starting line now and clears the way to the first turn, where our riders will be soon looking straight into the eyes of Ricky Towery, our official start man and finish line flagger here in the GSTC Racing Nation. Meat's finding its way over there near the first turn now. Riders readying themselves for the start of this battle. Only two points separate the championship bid with three rounds of racing left to go. There's still a lot in the air and a lot left to claim. All eyes focus on turn one as Ricky Towery takes his point and he lets the riders know one minute, one minute till this green flag waves and the Kanati Tires Burroughs GNCC will be underway. Uh, the next sign we see from Ricky will be the waving of the blue flag which will signal less than 30 seconds and the dead engine call. As Ricky tells these riders, shut them down, shut them down, shut them down, shut them down. We are now less than 30 seconds away from going GNCC racing. And as the hush goes across this starting line here today, I got to ask you, Ohio race fans, are you ready to go GNCC racing? Hey, it's been a while, and you guys are sounding pretty stoked, but I think you're a lot more stoked than that. So I'm going to ask you one more time. Ohio, are you ready to go GNCC Racing? Ten seconds. And row number one, the XC1 Pro will be off and rolling here at the Kanati Tires Burr Oaks GNCC. Big hole shot, bucks up for grabs as Ryder Shockey for the top position, and it's Bryson Neal grabbing the hole. No, excuse me, that is the number two of Hunter Hart with Bryson Neal in second place right behind him now. And we are off and rolling, and I'm not sure where Walker Fowler got off on that one, but Bryson Neal in second. It was Hunter Hart grabbing the early lead, XC2 Pro-Am, Jay Shadron, Shane McMillan, Grayson Eller, Brandon Owens, 10! Seconds. Nick Royal to Daniel Peters, Chase Allison White, Wilkin, Dylan Wall, Raven, Logan Hunt, Steve Harold, Tanner Walker, and Cole Setzer. And around the first turn in the two, the 908 Steve Harrell from Elk Ridge, Maryland on the Hatchet Racing Elka Suspension Lone Star backride. Hot behind him, the 621 of Wyatt Wilkin in the number two spot. Vet A30 plus class. Coming up next, Jeff Pop, uh, Big Papa Pickens, Brad Whitehead. Ten seconds. A.J. Koontz, James Green, Jonathan Fugate, John Arnold, T.J. Barrett, Michael McAvoy, and Jared Little. Off and rolling into that first turn now. And it's going to be the 25. Brad Whitehead from Sinking Spring, Pennsylvania. But oh, mercy. Jeffrey Pickens takes the lead heading into the woods. Senior A, 40 punch class. Coming up next. Seconds. Dirk DeCesar, Zachary Phillips, Brian Axline, Dominic Manici, Jeremy Gouchard, Chris Conklin, Todd Muscala, and Ronald Fontel. Nine twenty-nine, grabbing the early lead. Ronald Barndell from Hopwood, Pennsylvania. Spider Graphics, BNR Motorsports, and Moose Racing backride. College A, sixteen to twenty-one, and ten. 
seconds. Keaton Henderson, Alex Tiemann, Cody Forrester, Ian Burns, Dalton Keyes, Riley Salick, Christopher Howard, Trevor Furby, Ethan Meyer, Josh Ascraft, Lane McCormick, Kai Arbogast, Zach Knight, Parker Henderson, Lane Felder, Damian Hawkins, and James Golotta. The 9, 12, 5, 12 of Lane McCormick from Muncie, Pennsylvania on a Yale Cycle Barn Max's Fly Racing back right. Getting the early jump out of that one. Coming up next, Junior A, 22 plus in 10 seconds. Jeremy Ladon, Alan Blavos, Bryson Mullahan, Henry Moore, Colton Kasuda, Dason Como, Alex Elioff, Levi Cohen, Andrew Hicks, and Frankie Grant, Seth Wilson, Devin Masters, Corey Vandelinder, and Caden Ryan. One slow. Jeremy Ladon might have got the whole shot, but Dason Como out of Madison, Indiana, got the early lead on the 176 machine. That B30 plus class coming up next in 10 seconds. David Kite, Taylor Lazelle, Derek Hart, Travis Fleming, Christopher Latia, Kevin Simmons, Chris Carson, Brandon Byers, Joshua Worrell, and Corey Pancake. Three thirty-one. Taylor LaSalle out of Morgantown, West Virginia, grabbing the early lead as we go to the Senior B. 40-plus class coming up next. Rick Marino, Douglas Bailey, Shane Worth, John Shaner, Jason Rue, Jason Disco, Jeremy Van Fonsen, Mike Reiser, Chad Wallace, Tim White, Robert Stevens, and Richie McCauley. Ten seconds. The 312, a good jump off the line for that rider. That was his bike number anyway. Let's see who sorts it out in the second turn across the full hole shot stripe and headed to the woods. The 602 of Mike Reiser from Hubbard, Ohio on a BNR Motorsports Fly Racing Mick Marino concrete back ride. As we go to the College B 16 to 21 in 10 seconds. Michael Worth, Denton White, Andre Williams, Connor Brandt, Caitlin Bruno, Connor Adair, Hayden Hunter, Xander White, David Witt, Kevin Temple, Evan Grant, and Michael Horwath, Briggs Lazelle, Evan Osborne, William Walden, Ryan Hendershot, Easton Snyder, Kane Skinner, Ricky Surgeon, and Travis Dudley. Oh, looks like 285 going to get the gimme on now with Caitlin Bruno. I don't know if that was a rider from another class that's broken down or what, but they Bruno getting the lead there on the Bruno Racing Morgantown Power Sports Custom Astic Shocks in this College B class. One stalled on the start right now, still two in that class. Junior B 22 plus class. Ten seconds. William Wallace, Dylan Stein, uh, Trace Furby, Paul McCloskey, Hunter Boyle, Sean Newhouse, Justin Mullahan, Noah Howard, and Nicholas Blaney. Justin Mullahan out of Weston, West Virginia, grabs our final hole shot of this afternoon in that Junior B 22-plus class, and that's it. Our full field of con contingency of riders off and rolling through the hills of southeastern Ohio. And, of course, uh, inset and uh, looking to mark their page in history here. The big questions as we roll into this one. Can Bryson Hill stay up front and ahead of Walker Fowler? Will Walker Fowler? We all have our reasons to accomplish, to work hard. We share a common goal, to be the best. 
keep fighting, put in the work, never take the easy way. Your drive and determination fuels our passion. Born of family values and a homegrown work ethic, Kemetic Gasket seals your machine so you can focus on the finish line. Kemetic Gaskets are the competitive standard for racers who demand the very best. Kemetic Gaskets are constructed from superior materials designed to perform in the most demanding environment. Whether it's championships on the line or a day in the dirt with friends, professionals and enthusiasts depend on Kemetic. Kemetic Gaskets sealing championships since 1989. Amsoil runs on freedom and has since 1972. We punish our products firsthand in our world-class laboratories and beyond because some things can't be learned from a test tube. Run with us. Ben Kelly here, 2021 GNCC champion. Subscribe to Racer X and get yourself a fresh FMF t-shirt. This Racer TV broadcast is brought to you by Specialized. Specialized Turbo E-Bikes. It's you, only faster. And by Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Get ready. And welcome back to GNCC Live here on RacerTV.com. Mikey Wayne's here alongside uh, my colleague uh, Rodney Tomlin back here at the GNCC. As you guys heard down on the starting line, that familiar voice, that iconic 10-second call back with us. And I believe Cody Collier, 4x4 Pro Rider, uh, is going to join us in the booth as well with the race call. Uh, he just come off the track, 4x4 Pro, took second today uh, behind LW Landon Wolf. He took the win. Uh, so he said, Mikey, let me get freshened up. <laughs> Let me get rehydrated, and I'll meet you in the booth in a little bit. Uh, if you're just joining us, uh, we're going to get you started here as the XC2 is rolling through. Um, not the best start for Walker Fowler, honestly, uh, at least back to about fifth. Uh, but let's take a look at those uh, specialized start replays and see who was grabbing hole shots in the XC1 and XC2. Here we go. Burr Oak GNCC. Kanati Burr Oak. GNCC here in Millfield, Ohio. XC1 off and rolling as our riders jockey for position. And how a little checkup from the neck up from Hunter Hart as he grabs that whole shot. And you can see Walker Fowler, one, two, three, fourth back. He's got that black chest protector on. 
used to seeing him in the white chest protector. So, ooh, could it be? You know, hey, he's superstitious. I'm not, I'm not superstitious. I'm a little stitious, but nonetheless, He's middle of the pack right now. XC2, you're watching on screen right now. Good, good battle out front between the two front runners. Just missed it, I believe, on the camera shot there. But I believe that uh, heard Rodney Tomlin on the call with Steve Harrell grabbing the whole shot and Wyatt Wilkin uh, sitting here in the number two spot. So great start by Hunter Hart. I uh, was talking to Hunter prior to this one. Uh, first, let's take a look here at the Yamaha Racing track map uh, for Oak. Just good old fashioned uh, off road GNCC racing here, no doubt about that. Uh, we've been here once this season. This track a little different than what we had uh, back at the John Patton GNCC, this being the Burr Oak GNCC. Uh, featured uh, portions or sections of this track your Monster Energy, Monster Mile, the FMF PowerPoint. Um, so, a great. Great racetrack. Uh, I've only heard good things out of everybody from the micro riders to the youth to the AM race with those 4x4 Pro and those WXC Pros uh, out there this morning. They said a little dusty. Actually had a little rain uh, this morning. Kind of wasn't really on the radar as of yesterday. Kind of snuck up on us. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, watered the track a little bit. But as you can see on screen at, t on, at home on Racer TV, not the case anymore, pretty dusty. As a matter of fact, I'm coated in about a three inch layer of dust as I was sitting at the finish line calling racing this morning. <clears throat> but um, it, it's a little exaggeration. <laughs> they said they said a much of an exaggeration. All right, maybe an inch. It's definitely still on, Adam, there you go. Uh, <laughs> uh, but nonetheless, uh, obviously, huge things at stake for today between Bryson Neal and Walker Fowler. That's the conversation, that's the, the, the hot topic. Um, just two points separating those two riders. Bryson Neal comes in, points leader, 247 on the season. Walker Fowler comes in, 245 on the season. So again, just those two points. But the rider with the momentum right now is Walker Fowler. He had the win as we went into summer break at Snowshoe. He picked up the win in the round we returned uh, at the Mountaineer just a couple of weeks back. But boy, Bryson Neal, he has had uh, his way with this track uh, outside of uh, the crash. Uh, uh, several races back. It's hard to keep track. We come here twice a year over the last couple of years, few years, I should say. Uh, but nonetheless, this Bryson Neal has kind of been become uh, the guy to beat here at this property. So can he return to that form? Uh, spoke with Hunter Hart prior to today's race, and Hunter said, man, Mikey, I really kind of want to play spoiler. Um, I would love to wrap up the season uh, with 30 points here, 30 points in the next one, and 30 points at Ironman. Take 90 points with me. I mean, do the math. Those are wins. The guy wants to win, so he's hungry, um, and, and rightfully so. I think it's, you know, we call it silly season, but, you know, if I if my name is not Bryce Neal, my name is not Walker Fowler, and I'm an XC1 Pro, uh, I, I want to finish the season out uh, on a high note. I want to play spoiler. I get that those guys are racing for a championship, but, man, I'm racing too. So uh, you got a lot of hungry uh, XC1 riders out there, but obviously and rightfully so the spotlight on neil and fowler uh, as we come into today and, and as we mentioned hunter hart leading the way bryce and neil up in there um in the fight but walker fowler if we looked correctly i believe is back at about fourth or fifth um and we know walker likes to get out early and, and try to stretch things out a bit uh not going to be the case today walker fowler going to have to work from about mid pack of that xc1 and try to uh figure out a way to move up there and get in the fight because every point matters uh, with just three rounds of racing left or two rounds and about, what, <laughs> three quarters of a race left. So uh, get an idea uh, when they check in with a lap completed this morning to give you guys kind of an idea as we were looking at that track map. It's one of those tracks that was running on that cusp of, hey, are we going to do four laps and run it a little short? Is it going to end up being five laps, running a little long? So I got to think we're going to be right in that exact same scenario. And there is the 241 Magna One Motorsports uh, Yamaha, almost said Husqvarna, that's tomorrow, uh, Yamaha of Bryson Neal uh, leading the way right there. There is Walker Fowler on that with the black chest protector. Got to find out what, what that's about. Maybe he's like you know, taking on this new persona or something. I don't know, but hey, he means business. There is the 521 of Adam McGill, the Gator, a few a few seconds off that pace of Walker Fowler there. 
So things sorting themselves out early. Uh, obviously, as you saw, Walker Fowler able to pick up. Now, I wasn't sure as the as the, they were wearing on in here into uh, lap number one where he stacked up against the rest of those guys. So I believe it would put him, I don't think I missed anybody. I think third. I think Hunter Hart was still in there in the mix. Uh, may have missed one rider, might have been fourth. But third, fourth, uh, we'll know we get a better eye on it here in a moment. But uh, you are looking at the Method Alley, Method Race Wheels. Uh, great sponsor here at GNCC. And um, again, like I said, all eyes on the Bryce and Neal and Walker Fowler battle. But Hunter Hart, hey, he wants to play spoiler. John Glada Jr. Uh, right there. It's been, uh, we have to go all the way back to round five where we saw Glada hit the podium and he's missed that mark uh, just barely a few times with a couple of fours, a couple of six. Does Glada return to podium form? Cole Richardson, the Cole train coming off a second place finish. Matter of fact, back to back podiums for the Cole train. Uh, can he back that up? It was interesting after the race at the Mountaineer, uh, the comments both by Cole Richardson, but primarily Walker Fowler, uh, when he came in and he got the win, went to go get the TV interview with him. With If you guys were still watching at the end of that one, and he said, Mikey, hang on, I, I'm going to go cheer for Cole Richardson. I've never been a bigger Cole Richardson fan. I need him to finish in between me and Braxton Neal. So he became spect spectator for about a minute's time, and uh, I don't know that anybody was as happy as Walker Fowler was when uh, the cold train came in for the second place finish on the day as our XC2 guys rolling through uh, Method Alley right now. Uh, Jay Shadron, by the way, I believe we're gonna be crowning as a champion. Uh, I think statistically actually wrapped that thing up last round. Uh, so we will get, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna honor him with a number one plate here today, uh, Jay Shadron. Hopefully he has a good day. He certainly has had a good season, no doubt about this, but uh, about probably eight miles in for our leaders right now as more of our XC2 riders coming through uh, the seven mile marker here. Uh, wanted to bring up a couple more names to know. Devin Feehan, uh, Jared McClure, can't count that guy out. Adam McGill, uh, pretty good start for him. Um, Josh Merritt, uh, a lot of people had their eyes on Josh Merritt coming into this season, uh, and rightfully so. The man comes in, he's rocking the number six uh, national number that he earned last season. Uh, but I think if you were to ask Merritt how he feels about this year, he would agree he feels like he should have done a little better. So what's he going to do here in these last three rounds? Uh, is he going to be able to turn it on and get to where I think Josh Merritt expects to see himself uh, as an XC1 pro? So uh, just a few names to uh, keep an eye on out there. Uh, riders a note, if you will, and uh, Walker Fowler. Pretty interesting, took win number 72 at the last round. And we had a little interview we played with him and he said, I don't really, you know, I kind of forgot how many wins I've got. And I thought, no way, he knows, he's gotta know. He's playing He's playing mind games with us. Um, now I think he genuinely wasn't sure until uh, I think Mark Notman was like, it's 72. Um, the reason I bring that up, Chris Borich, who's out there. Uh, still doing his thing. Hell, look at this battle in the XC1 class here at the Monster Mile. Bryson Neal and I believe Hunter Hart right there duking it out in the one and two spot. Hunter Hart all over. I mean, you, I, again, you talk about hunger. You talk about, um, I think Hunter Hart, if nothing else, you look at this season and he's got to be thinking as Walker Fowler comes to, comes through. See there, it didn't look like a black dress protector. It looks almost clear with Maybe it's the black jersey underneath. I don't know. There's just something different about Walker Fowler. He's got a little swagger to him right now. Sitting in the three spot. He's got to do it from behind. We'll see how it works out. But good racing so far uh, in this one. But again, uh, the reason I brought up the wins, Chris Borich out there, 75 career wins. Uh, Walker Fowler, uh, 72. So do the math. Three rounds left. If Walker Fowler can win out, he would tie Chris Borich. Easier said than done, as you see on screen. Just got a shot of Adam McGill right there leading this pack of XC1 riders jockeying for position. There's the 703 of Austin Abney, my buddy. Talked to him after the race. I snubbed him on the starting line. Uh, completely forgot my fellow Hoosier uh, last race in the starting lineups. I felt terrible about it. My phone blew up from everybody back home in Indiana. They're like, dude, you forgot our guy. I said, you're right, I did. I feel terrible. Well, Austin Abney went out, he took it personal. He said, Mikey, you made me mad. No, he didn't say that, but he said you know, in the back of his head a little bit. And we joked about it after the race. He's like, you know what? Just leave my name 
out of the starting lineups every race because that was the best finish I've ever had in the XC1. So just forget me all the time. Well, Rodney messed up, and Rodney actually called Austin Abney's name and his sponsors. Well, <laughs> as I was doing that, I you thought, ooh. I, I, I knew I messed up because whenever I remember watching that interview that you've done with him, and he was pretty stoked about the fact that you, you missed him and maybe we could do it again. <laughs> I was, yeah, I was gonna. Miss you should have at least made a crowd. I mean, we want to, you know, obviously give him a shout out and his sponsors and all that. Um, so it was my mistake in, in all seriousness, but uh, he was very good, good spirited about it. Um, and that was a number one green plate. So I think Jay Shadron, check, 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 Jay Shadron. Uh, is that coming there? Yeah, I got um, yeah, that was Jay wrap Shadron. that up. Yeah, wrap that up. Last race, uh, he, he and did we'll honor him today. Yeah, we're at uh, the Monster Mile, Mile Nine, and it looks like there's a couple different lines that these guys can choose, and one of them's kind of uh, kind of gnarly, and one, the other one's just off the beaten path. So, an interesting place for spectators to hang out is right around the Mile Nine. It looks like, and it's de I definitely got its challenges. There's, there's rocks, uh, which you know they a, a barrier it's there throughout the day with the dirt on and off, and things like that, and. That oh, right there, there those big cracks and crevices you got in the rock. One thing that I notice is where the string tape is around that big hole. You don't want to slide over into there, I don't think. <laughs> and that string tape's not going to stop you from doing no, that. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Man, guys, uh, I don't know if you caught it off the start, but Bryson Neal, he didn't. He didn't rip the whole shot, but as he was going into turn number three, <laughs> he was giving a fist pump. Yeah, he was making the pass and, and, and was trying, that's for sure. He and Hunter Hart. And, and, and me, being, I mean, I, it's been since snowshoes since I've been to a GNCC, and just all of a sudden I say, Bryson Neal with the, and Bryson was right behind Hunter on the 241, and I was like, oh crap, oh crap. Yeah. But yeah. it was Hunter out front and, and Bryson in the number two spot. Is that Bryson's having fun today is uh, what I took away from that. He's got the fist in the air. He's <laughs> not even in the lead. And he's got the fist in the air. He knows he was ahead of Walker Fowler at that point. And that's, he's, he's a force to be reckoned with today. That's the key right there. And, and, and as much as anything, that might have been uh, tr uh, trying to play a little mind game with yeah. Walker, that little fist pump right there. Just <laughs> that come little, come get me. Yeah, I'm up here. Yeah. I'm up here. Where are you? And we'll see where he's at here in just a few moments. Look did, at that drone shot, guys. Did you get a chance to ask, and maybe it's my eyes, maybe it's the camera. Correct me if I'm wrong, but Walker's in a black chest protector. Is that right? Or is it, it's, it's got to be, it's not the white one we're used to. It looked a little different. I didn't notice. I noticed that something was different. I didn't pick up on what it was. It is black. We're going to cut. Yeah, bright, he's bright the dark green. horse. Yeah, yeah. you're, you're right. Personality. I, I actually pray with him on the start line every time, and you're right. I'm thinking back. It, it was black. Ooh, it was That's what yeah. was so different. And he was organized today too. He's like usually we're, we do we throw the prayer in at the last, and today it was first. It's uh, mm. yeah. Don't mess with Walker Fowler today either. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the Dark Knight. Well, yes, yeah, is yeah. out in full force, man. Talking with Mark Notman about that one, um, he said that. Uh, uh, Walker has been a totally different person the last two weeks. He says the oh, energy level that he's been uh, been uh, living with has been off the scale. Here comes uh, our leaders, and that that looks like uh, the 241 of uh, Bryson Neal out front and on point in this one. Hunter Hart back in the number two spot. Last time I saw those guys as they rounded that third turn into the trees, it was just the opposite. There is, I believe, was that the number one we saw there? Yeah. In the number three spot, he's looking at about an 8.2 second deficit. So, uh, a 25-15 for Neil, a 25-18 for Hunter Hart, and 25-26. So about nine seconds, I think, is what I got calculated. Uh, maybe 11 seconds up to Bryson Neal from Walker Fowler right now. So uh, that'll be interesting. He's definitely got him well within sights, but that's starting to bridge that uh, out of uh, sights. Uh, category when you get into some of those uh, wood sections, especially with a lot of the foliage still on the trees. A lot of the, still the undergrowth has a lot of leaves on it still as well, just like the trees do here on our first weekend of uh, fall here in 2022. And this is the first official weekend of fall. Fall came yeah. in on, I think it was what, when Thursday at 9.04 yep. p.m. Oh, that, that exact. I, I didn't know I did. there was an exact time. I, I had no idea. I did to too. It. I didn't either, but you know, being in radio well, you know, now. Radio, he's on the radio now, so he gets it. all these interesting I, things. I get a lot of interesting things. Yeah, absolutely. So it wasn't just like here. Your producer tells you all kinds of interesting absolutely. things. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. If it wasn't for them, I probably wouldn't keep up with things. But no, in all seriousness, I mean, I thought it was. I've never seen fall 
fall on uh, temperatures actually fall fall on actual fall day. Oh, you know what yeah, I mean? that's I mean, true. It was like 92 degrees on yes. Wednesday, the last day of summer, and it was like 70 on the first day of fall and uh, or autumn, whatever you want to call it. I thought that was pretty interesting. And those temperatures, that trend continues into this weekend. Talk about very comfortable temperatures. Last time we were here, we were looking at extreme heat temperatures and things of that nature. Riders nearly falling out. Uh, conditions uh, not as favorable as and what they are. And then a monsoon. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and wrecked canopies <laughs> and mud for Sunday. That yes. was wild. Yeah. And, so. and hopefully, I mean, the, the forecast has changed so much over the course of the last five days. It's ridiculous. It rained this morning. It wasn't supposed to rain at all this weekend. Then it was supposed to rain tomorrow afternoon, then overnight tonight, and then uh, I don't know what's going to happen. We could use a little bit of water, Charlie. Oh, yeah. I mean, look at the dust even on the starting line and now out here at the finish line where we've got the, the uh, TV camera parked. Uh, it's 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 kicking up a kicking up a dust here. Bryce and Neil, Hunter Hart, Walker, Fowler, one, two, and three. Cole Richardson has checked in in the number four spot. He's about 34 seconds back. Adam McGill rounds out your top five now. He was another nine and a half seconds behind Richardson. John Glotta Jr. back about five, six seconds behind Adam McGill in sixth, seventh is Jared McClure. Brandon Owens, your leader of the XC2 Pro Am, is checking in in an eighth place position overall after time adjustments. Austin Abney, the 703 would be eighth in the uh, pro class, ninth place overall right now. Steve Harrell, who is second in the XC2 Pro-Am, rounds out your top 10 overall. And Wyatt Wilkin, third in the XC2 Pro-Am, is 11th overall. Here's some notes of interest for you. When they checked in there, Jay Shadron, not only 12th overall, but was fourth in class. Hmm. A little unusual spot for him, uh, given the year that he's had. He's been rolling and he's been on rails, and so uh, look for him to move up. I would also look for Austin Abney to catch fire. He's coming off of a real good weekend two weeks ago. Uh, Mikey Wayne's you know, buddy there from Indiana, <laughs> and uh, the whole state of Indiana, I think, was cheering on Austin Abney for the last two weeks on social media, so he's got a lot of confidence coming into today. Hey, they're, they're hyped back home again for him. It was, you know, when he transitioned from XC2 to XC1, everybody's blowing me up. Mikey, he's going to be the champ. And I'm like, right, slow down. I said, oh, slow down. It's such a huge transition because, you know, you take a look at Hunter Hart, how he had dominated XC2. Right. Riders before him had done it. It's such a huge step up. And I think until those riders get to that level of the pro class, that's a big wake-up call. But I think now Austin is, is reaching that – uh, point in his career where he needs to be finishing in those top five, at least six, seventh in that range, fourth, right. fifth, sixth, seventh, I think is a good spot for Austin Abney. He's, he's sitting ninth right now. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, that's the one thing that he has to realize. I think that Austin still is of the mindset that he needs to be riding so much harder yeah. to try to, to match the pace of what those guys are doing in first and second right, right now when he needs to build up to that. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, you know, he feels it. Everybody around him feels it. And they right. say, you got it, you got it. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And they're giving him that kind of false sense of security instead of just trying to build on all the positive yeah. each, each week and build stronger and stronger. And, and they'll figure it out. And, and, and they he, do build on the positives. Yeah. They really do. I mean, we see consistently yes. better finishes each week. And he made a, a real good point. I was really happy to hear him say this. He said it was great to run up front with those guys, those top five, so I can key off them. I can see that pace with my own eyes in front of me uh you hear those guys talk about that all the time and chuck you can attest to that you get a guy that's uh faster than you maybe even in another class or what have you running on sunday mornings and you can key off of them see what they're doing and it helps you it does it does sometimes all you have to do is just put your mental focus on that rear tire and uh, you're going faster than you knew you could go anyway yeah. And if you can just keep that up. And, you know, for him, he's so young and he's learning that uh, he, he's got a long way to go. And uh, I think, you know, the sky's the limit for him. So, uh, for sure. Man, I see Cody Collier walking into the booth here. I'm going <laughs> to give up my headset because this guy, man, he sees through the dust. And he sees those. He doesn't even have to see the number plates. He sees uh, he sees these riders <laughs> as, as they're coming. So, guys, good talking to you. And uh, I'll be out there cheering on these guys for sure. Yeah, yeah, he he got such a great introduction. I'm a, I'm a little bit intimidated now with Cody Call. You know, I ain't. hey, here here's the thing. Here's the wild Who's thing. Out? I haven't. I mean, we haven't really had a normal day in the booth since before. <laughs> that, that's what I'm since saying. Before snowshoe, because you were out at snowshoe, yeah. and then things definitely different there. Then last race, yep. I was out, and definitely de things were different there. I think things were different even before snowshoe, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, it, it's been a whacked out uh, kind of. Uh, different kind of sort of year from an announcing booth but it's been the same thing on the racetrack yeah. out there. you never know what to expect out there either and 
And, and congratulations on a great run today. I know that you and L-Dub went at it big time. Mercy sakes. And that's that crevice that I was talking about as we go back to the Monster Mile. Oh, boy. And there, <laughs> and these are the, the, yep, there's exactly what we were talking. You don't want to get off into one of those uh, uh, little nooks or crannies because they can suck in. Fortunately, I don't think, yeah, somebody's gotten sucked down into there now. My so. buddy Nick Royalty up there I saw trying to wiggle his machine out of there. Nine mile marker, Monster Mile. We have a rider that raced this morning right here. Finished second overall, if I'm not mistaken, 4x4 Pro Class, Cody Collier. Uh, did you guys get that portion of the track right there? I believe you, you didn't. You, that, where, where are you at, man? Chuck, Chuck, Chuck fixed the mic so it wouldn't work for you. <laughs> How's that? Check, check. Go. I'm back. I'm You're back. 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 Welcome back, Cody Collier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no, that was a PM only section. We did not get to run that. Before. I like that. I like the technical section, but you they saved some, they saved the best for these guys. There you go. So we are in to the uh, pro row now, and there is Fowler going by, as uh, noted there a few moments ago. Was your third place ride? I think he still is. Neil and Hart ahead of him about 10 seconds or so. See some dust just ahead of. They are starting to fade away a little bit so and there are the leaders just up ahead there going into the wood section so uh, good uh, good run still going Bryson Neal, Hunter Hart, Walker Fowler, Cole Richardson, Adam McGill your top five uh, looking back into that XC2 uh, Pro-Am class that we were watching there a few moments ago in surprise shock and awe if you will with uh, well not so much I mean other than Jay Shadron wasn't leading but uh, Brandon Walker, or Brandon Collins. Owens from Walker, West Virginia, I think it is. Uh, he, uh, believe it or not, I mean, this is a writer that I, I've been kind of singing the praises about for the last couple of seasons because I've had bugs in my ears over the years saying, hey, you got to keep an eye on this guy. You got And we've seen those glimpses of greatness. He hasn't been able to consistently put things together, but you know, uh, it, it's things like this with Brandon Owens, that uh, days like this, a lead like this, a win like this, uh, especially over Jay Shadron at, with the level of competition that he's just got to these boys this year. This could be pretty phenomenal for him toward the end of the season. And this could get the ball rolling for the wait till you see Brandon Owens and yeah. how well he rides scenario that we've been uh, looking for for the last couple of seasons. Yeah, got a, got a good start or whatever. Got, got Got away from the traffic and just putting in good laps. Um, maybe we'll pick through the backpacks and actually one guys and chase them down, give them some motivation, and keep going today for sure. Without sitting, shout out to Steve Morrell as well, second in uh, that exit two class. Yes, uh, it's top 10 overall. Harold, yeah. Her Harold Harrell. Yeah. I'm not 1,000% sure. But, <laughs> but it, it may, would you call him Harrell? Anyway, whichever it is, Steve. Uh, Steve has certainly been very consistent this season, Cody. Um, kind of off my radar. Wasn't even on the radar when we started out this 2022 season. I'm not going to lie. I had to do double checks, and I had to go back and look several different times and, 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 and scratching my head saying, wow, man, I mean, this guy, it, you know, you think, well, maybe it's just a, a one race. Oh, maybe he's just going to have two. No, no, he's had like 10 lucky races yeah. so far. <laughs> lucky. I like I, and I don't call them lucky, but they are. You make your own luck. And the way you make it is you put yourself in a position to take advantage of certain circumstances and situations, and he's making good luck mm -hmm. for himself. Yeah, right I don't now. think he even started racing until like two, three years ago. Ran the College A class. I think last year was his full, first full season of racing. Wow. And then, uh, just jumped up to XC2 this year and put on a show. <laughs> wow. That's, yeah. that's, I think, even more impressive than uh, the fact that he's been consistent this year, the fact that he's only been doing a short period of time. That's why he's off, he was off the radar because he was on nobody's radar. <laughs> like, he was just out, out in the woods doing his own thing. I think uh, he was in with the Hetrick boys, did some riding for them, and uh -huh. uh, uh, did just natural talent. Absolutely. Doing a great job. Uh, again, it's Owens, Harold, Wilkin, Jay Shadron in fourth. Grayson Eller in the number five spot. Grayson having a slow and sluggish start to the season. He was hoping and expecting a little better results, but coming off of a knee injury for him, it's taken a little longer to get back up to speed than he expected. Dylan Walraven, the 622 and 6, the 426 of Daniel Peters out of Brownstown, Indiana, is running 7th. Tanner Walker out of Berlin, PA, in 8th. Chase Allison, McClellantown, PA, is ninth on the 470. And Cole Setzer from Morgantown, Indiana, uh, the 997 rounds out the top 10. You got Logan Huff and Shane McMillan in the 11 and 12 spots in the XC2 Pro-Am class. 
But again, uh, big surprises for me. There's Cole Richardson. That's, I believe, uh, your fourth place position, right, coming Yeah, it looks like got, they've got a, Walker's got a big gap on him. Definitely out of sight. But Walker's not too far out of sight from Hart and Neal. Um, so top three look pretty, like 10 seconds apart, and then uh, they got a big gap back to Cole. And then it uh, looks like Junior's put the move on the here. Say that. Yep, absolutely. And, uh, look, Junior's looking to make his way forward, not too far off the pole. Um, I think I, I expect him to start running down Cole here in the next couple laps. One thing impressive about me and Junior is the fact that you know he's got the speed, explosive speed, and he's able to, to do some big things. Is that you, you don't see him really riding crazy. You don't see him riding over his head. He don't push the limits, but what he does do is he, he chugs along. He puts a good, solid, steady uh, uh, push in. Uh, you know, from that first lap after you get jumbled around, you know what it's like out there, Cody, in that XC1 Pro Class. You can get bounced around quite a bit. Once that settles down, he settles in and he just kind of goes to work and kind of methodically makes his moves through the, through the pack. You know, right now we're seeing him work up into the fives and even into the fours and things like that. But don't think that it's not going to be too long before you see that same scenario where he's doing that and reeling in third and reeling in second. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've, I'm, you know, I'm good friends with Junior. He's talked to me a lot about uh, what he's going through. And uh, he, he says he's up there battling with the top three a lot um, and just is like a mistake or two away from finishing with them. So he's learning that pace, learning the the little things about not making those mistakes and how to be there at the end of two hours and uh I, junior's really coming to his own right now that's that shows a lot of maturity and, and he's still quite a young rider by comparison with some of the riders up front is that the 621 going by yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah this top four x2 is really close you had a ronnie rush in the middle of that battle right in front of Pharrell. um she she should give away to away to Pharrell soon better than that good battle first and second the x2 but uh yeah top four uh right there Here's uh, Johnny G. Amerit, I uh, apologize. Same fly gear. JM6. Fly gear, Yamaha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You get a mulligan. I guess uh, I didn't realize it, but I, um, uh, we didn't see Josh. Well, I mean, I realized that. We didn't see Josh, I don't think, at uh, Snowshoe. I guess he got injured before Snowshoe. Had something with his uh, hip, some some joint in his mm. hips. Uh, overstretched something, had to let it settle and re-heal. They want to messes it while it's healing. Absolutely. Uh, he's, I mean, he seemed to be walking around okay and in, in, in good spirits today when I saw him. Uh, got a pretty good run going here today. I'm sure one that he would like to have a, a little better touch with the front runners out there right now. But, man, in those circumstances and those situations, I had some hip issues earlier this spring myself and, and actually had to miss a race because of it myself earlier this spring with the first Indiana race that we had. But uh, so I understand, you know, how uh, – how how important it is to, to to do that and to have him doing what I he's mean, doing right now for is these impressive. guys any injury that they have i mean just just something your shoulder your wrist your ankle yeah, anything you're, you're you'll using everything it. yeah you'll, you'll you'll any injury to these guys is like that brian eccles and uh, jared bolt on trail bosses there working hard or hardly working you know? well uh, you know what this is something that i guarantee you they don't they rarely no, have a chance. They to. really don't. I'll vouch for that. They've already done all the work. The track's laid out. They're just, it's on, it's on uh, and, and autopilot it, right now. And, and, and I'll tell you another thing, you know, under normal circumstances, and that right there is a good indication and a good sign. They're at the problem spot right now. That's where yeah. they are. This is the problem spot. It's fixed now, and they're just kind of hanging out and watching racing at this particular point. They don't generally get that kind of luxury. No. Most of the time, there's madness and mayhem going on yes. all around the track, so they're going from point to point to point. But uh, such great course conditions, such a great track layout, uh, such a great facility that uh, this everything's- This is one of my favorite Penton tracks, honestly. It was, Th this one, this was weekend, really you're saying? This, the, okay. Today, today yeah. this is one of my favorite Penton tracks I've ever raced. This is a Burr Oak track, by Yeah, come on. Penton 2.0, Burr Oak. Oh, 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 the, uh, the Burr Penton. Oh, Lane McCormick here, top am rider I've seen so far. I, I, yeah, I don't think we've seen anybody else. No, uh, no. Taking a look, College A, right? Yeah, college yeah, he A. is running 14th, 14th. overall. Yeah, really, really James Golovin Jr., the 928, is 20th overall. He's running, though, 55 seconds behind Lane McCormick in that class. So both those guys going pretty good. Still a pretty big distance between first and second. That says something about the speed of those boys, I think, especially Lane. The, the Pickens coming through. A.J. Koontz, top two Vet A riders. They aren't even in the top 20 overall at the moment. Yeah, I believe that. Uh, I'm not sure what the rotation was. I think College A started back this weekend. But they're uh, probably Vet A was first row to take off, was my guess. First amateur row, that yeah. would make sense. AJ Coons checking in at 23rd overall. That would actually put him in 
fourth as far as top amateur. It looks like College A third place rider uh, there. Well, I saw that uh, Damien. No, that's James out on the team now. I was talking to James. He said if he uh, wins this weekend, he uh, locks up the College A championship. Yeah, Damien Hawkins, by the way. Damien Hawkins, I was just oh, making sure, yeah. is your third top amateur overall, third in College A at this particular point. Then it goes to the vet A30 plus of Big Papa P, Jeff Pickens. Mm -hmm. Looks like Jeff was leading that class. Yeah. Well, let's see. No, uh, no he's the. Uh, he was leading here on camera. He yeah, he might have been. AJ. He was, he was. I'm sorry. I, all these numbers are running together on me. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, he was. He turned a lap time of 28.12, believe it or not. 28.12.13. Uh, behind him, Damian Hawkins actually turned a 28.12.17. Those guys running nearly identical lap times on different rows. Yeah, track kind of limits your speed. You can see in this section, they're having to check up over the rollers. You kind of, you have to check up, Oof. lose half a second. Uh, Keep speed through a section like that. There's your leader, Bryce Neal. And there's a big gap. <laughs> not bad, <laughs> Maybe not, not, bad. not a big gap, but uh, right. hey, a gap. Is that that no, that's still, uh, still Hunter in the number two spot, yep. right? Yes, sir. Let's see where the Black Knight is, or the Dark Knight, the Dark Knight. Okay, there were three seconds that separated first and second. It's a little larger than that. Oh, and yeah. Now there's a lot larger gap between second and third now. So I'm going to say somewhere in the neighborhood of 15, maybe 20 seconds in that neighborhood uh, that we waited there uh, on the number one of Walker Fowler to check through here at mile marker number seven now. It's funny, Walker Fowler is a superstitious guy, right? Yeah. A very methodical in like pre-race routine. I, I'm, I'm surprised um, that he switched that's, the prayer up. That keeps blowing me away. But Dude, when he said that, I was like, oh boy. Uh, <laughs> if he stays back here and he can't catch up you watch him when he pits he's gonna throw on the white chest protector <laughs> he's like not man, make time for it man make time for it i wore the wrong chest there's got to be he doesn't do things for no reason this isn't coincidence there's a there's a reason behind it and i'm ready to go find out uh, i'm gonna head down to the pits here in a minute and and we're just gonna interview mark notman and see if he'll tell us but there's got to be a reason Gotta if be. not, Mark Notman, if you can hear me, just come up with something. Just make, <laughs> make something, something up. up. <laughs> Cole Richardson running fourth. Uh, John uh, Adam McGill and John Glotta switching up there. So uh, Glotta Jr., as they like to call him there uh, amongst the pro riders, is out ahead of McGill now in that number five spot. McGill dropping back to six. I, I think another rider we need to keep an eye out for is uh, Jared McClure. Sneaky Snake, a.k.a. Cobra. It looks like Abney got around him in the last shot. Did the he really? Fourth. There yeah, he goes. Abney was already ahead of Wow, Abney's on a mission, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, close, yeah. he's close to McGill. Not far off at all. Wow. So hey, good. There, there he is. There's McClure. Not yeah. too far back from Now, I'm trying Abney. to remember back. Was did, did was Jared was having a shoulder issue not too long Broke ago. his collarbone. Broke his collarbone. Was that, yep. was, that was snowshoe. Um, and then... Uh, had, was out starting break and then broke down at the first round back at the okay. So I, I remember there was a, a shoulder problem that he that and it, so that makes sense. So uh, I don't know if, you know if he still you know maybe didn't get a chance to train a lot. Well, I don't know. I mean today this that's the thing about this racetrack today. It sets a great racetrack and you could say everything is so evenly matched. So if that's the case, one little mistake could turn out to be something monumental for these guys. That was the situation for me today. I had one. I hit one, smoked a tree on the last lap and Lamb was able to walk away. We were we were matched for pace. There's, once you can see someone hitting hit, how they're hitting stuff, it's there's not a lot of uh, track limits your speed. You can't really oversend stuff here. Right. Um, so and, and right now, as far as Bryson Neal and Hunter Hart are concerned, the gap that they're opening up out front right now, that right there is wow. I mean, you just got to have a lot of confidence in what you're doing out there in these woods to ride like that to get those kind of uh, you times. You know that, yeah. what it's doing. Yeah. And, you know, honestly, uh, you know, race after race, you know, we watch and you know, we hold our breath and wondering, you know, how can, can he go much faster? And, you know, <laughs> wow, he is going that much faster or whatever the case may be. But uh, uh, definitely, you know, I watch these guys and I think you know, to myself, you know, they've got to be riding the ragged edge. And then when you talk to them, they say, no, I've still got more. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. you think they're riding as hard as they can possibly ride. And they say, I, no, I got more. I'm they're, telling you, Bryce. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I think they're just riding the edge of the track, but they feel like that track 
what the conditions of that track at that point will give them. That's what they're riding. Uh, they, they can push it a lot. Oh! Bit, but, yeah, this, this is the track. What are you doing, homie? <laughs> I think as Pitboard said, if you hit me, I'll buy you a beer after the race. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, a little Guess lucky what, right he, there. He gets a beer after the race, uh, then, if that's the case. <laughs> no, but to both of your points, I can't help but think of Bryce and Neil his maturity, he learned that I don't need to go 100 miles an hour uh, to get a win. I need to go fast, but he's riding on that edge because we've seen the Bryson Neal that goes maybe a little too fast at times as, as Walker Fowler gets a little sideways uh, and he breaks down. You know, he has that you know, breaks something on the machine because the guy's just pounding yeah, the track. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, just, you know, relying on the fact that his parts and pieces are going yeah. to hold up. And, you know, Cody, you know as well as I do, I mean, they're, they're built. They're rugged pieces of equipment that uh, these aftermarket, a lot of products and stuff that, that folks get. We're going to have a uh, rapid replay on this in just a second. See uh, Walker Fowler, I think, uh, crossing this crevice. To well, that or Bryson Neal oh, okay. smoking this guy. Oh, yeah, there it is. Hey, how are you? <laughs> he was. He was standing right in. He wanted him to cut straight across. <laughs> Bryson wasn't having it. No, no, dude. Yeah, he's he's the XC1 Pro Class leader. You don't tell him where to go. So anyway, uh, hopefully everything's okay in that department. But now Walker, I was just saying Walker was just a little slick getting out of that uh, that crevice. He had a little tougher time with the crevice. Oh! oh. Ooh. Ca 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 hey, found a rock. Yeah, that was was that Junior? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. All right, buddy. All right, get back. See, and, and, and there it is. I mean, There's like that. I say, this track is great conditions, and, and, and riders are evenly. Ma I mean, I mean. Oh, and it happens again. But I mean, it's he might have bent something. Yeah, he might have bent. He hit hard. Yeah, it's things like this though that that make the difference in the race. Like you were talking about, you smoked a tree, and that was the separation between you and Landon out there this morning. Otherwise, you were matching each other. And oh yeah, yeah, we went back and forth a few times. Rub a little, uh, rub. Rubbing rubber, you know, uh, it, it was a good time out there today. My question is, where was Kevin Cunningham in this whole thing today? I really uh, expected it. He led. Uh, I passed him. Uh, Landon got around him. I think he dropped back to fourth where I passed him. Right. And uh, I'd never seen him all day. Me and Landon just checked that. Me and Landon were just, uh, I got out front. I set pace. Landon was able to key off me, and uh, we just checked out. That's awesome, man. It was a good battle, no doubt about that. And we got a great one going on. Nearing epic proportions. <laughs> <laughs> As our good friend Jared Bolton was mentioning there yesterday, he was like, and it, it was funny. He goes, remember a few years ago when we just wore out the word epic and we mm -hmm. swore we wouldn't, he said, but he said, we got to revive it because this is the absolute explanation of the word epic whenever you look at the ATV championship that's going on right now. <laughs> Two points separating Neil and Fowler coming into this round of racing, guys. <laughs> and last race, Bryson Neal finishing third. Uh, and of course, uh, Walker Fowler taking that win. That was his second win. Had some great momentum. Talking, well, like I said, uh, mentioned a few moments ago, we were down. We were uh, talking with Mark Notman. Mark was like, "Hey, man, I haven't seen this kind of energy out of Walker in a long time. He's been a different person the last two weeks. You know, he felt good over the summer break, knowing that he was able to bridge some of those points. But after that win and how well it went, you know, it's just been a whole different Walker. And and you know, like, and then we got to the point. Black chest protector broke, Walker. Broken traditions. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, and, and I'm glad that, that, that Walker is, is trying to, um, you know, get away from that. He doesn't, you know, so he isn't drugged down by things like that, by uh, by superstition or whatever the case may be. And whether it be coincidence or not, <laughs> it's just chance that it happens to work out this way and he happens to have the black chest protector on it. He have, but the one, the other thing on this, the flip side of this coin, guys, we're talking about that like that right now. But the day ain't over. Oh, no doubt. We're yeah, we're not even halfway. We haven't even reached the one hour point. That's right. Yet. We're 51 minutes into this race right now. So, I mean, honestly, we can't really begin to speculate anything, especially knowing the speeds of Walker Fowler and seeing what kind of little things can jump up the bite you look at this track i mean there's a lot of jagged edge rock showing there's a lot of soft areas out there as well and uh, uh some dry areas with dust and things of that nature so i mean there's a good variation of uh, terrain and if you 
just happened to hit one section of it the wrong way, it could cost you huge. <laughs> like you have to constantly be able to adapt to the conditions here. It's dry and powdery and hard packed. And then like the section we just seen was all roots and slick and gnarly and snot. And then there's sections where it's just thick cake. And they, they got th this track has got a little bit of everything going on to it. You got to stay on your toes, stay adapting, and uh, ride the track for what it's worth. 25 minutes, 15 seconds was what it took. Bryson Neal in lap number one, lap number 26, 26 minutes, 12 seconds. So it was about a, a minute slower. But again, I think we got a little bit extra track length out there. But the big thing is here, you know, we saw that 26.15 lap time there for Hunter Hart. He was three seconds only slower. So a six and a half second gap. Now, I don't know. It felt like it was a little bigger than that when yeah, we saw sure it did. out there. So has Hunter maybe bridged that gap back up just a little bit? And here's going to be the interesting question to answer. What kind of gap do we see back to Walker now? You know, we said it's got to be 20 seconds. We're looking at 26 seconds before Walker Fowler now checks in in the number three spot. Uh, 32 seconds now behind Bryson Neal and the number one spot. Cody, let me ask you this. You look at race conditions today. Track is obviously, as we can see on screen, pretty rough, uh, beating these guys up. How big of a factor is that dust if you're sitting there in the two spot, your Hunter Hart, who is right there with Bryson Neal? How much of it is Bryson trying to pull away? How much of it is Hunter Hart saying, my God, I got to catch my breath. I need to breathe a little more oxygen than I am dust right now. I got to fall back and just kind of get into this race pace. With the, all, with the rain we got this morning, yeah. the dust just blood the water today. It, it okay. wasn't blocking vision at all. You just get little puffs of dust through, and you could see right through it. Okay. And, uh, uh, you could keep right on rolling. Ooh. Wow, man, tough break for uh, Devin Feehan. The number seven looks like he must have broken down as he pushes that ATV back to the pits. I don't know what the breakdown issue would be. We'll get a word on that, I'm sure, with Mikey Waynes here as he's already on his way over to the pro pits. Uh, interestingly, I uh, just got some word there from our producer that uh, Devin uh, really getting into the cycling and I know that uh, uh, Cody you you can attest to this probably as much as anybody being a, a pro racer and uh, a GNCC racer a lot of you guys do do a lot of cycling and things out there and uh, uh, it looks like some of you are getting more interested in it than others I guess huh? uh, yeah, we just like to stay busy you know we like uh, always got things we're working on doing and uh, some of us like the bicycling and uh, I, I do, I, I got a motorcycle, uh, dirt bike. I've been doing the dirt biking and doing that. That's been my thing. Some people do it like the uh, mountain biking and, uh, you know, whatever makes you happy. If that's where he wants to be, all, all power to him. I hope he does well. Well, if the rumor, uh, we'll miss you. Well, I guess that, that the, honestly, that, uh, for, you know, from what we've heard, uh, that uh, Devin was Ooh. thinking about transitioning into mountain biking before COVID hit. And then, of course, COVID came around, and uh, that kind of hindered that a little bit. And he's kind of rededicated himself to uh, GNCC and ATV racing. But over the course of time as well, that, that passion hasn't left him. And he's got a, a yearning, if you will, to get into that. So uh, from what I'm understanding, this may be the last season we see, at least on a uh, professional push like this for Devin Feehan in uh, GNCC ATV racing. So hope uh, I hope it's a memorable one. Uh, this right here creates memories, <laughs> Cody, but it's not the kind of memories you want, that's for no, sure. No, that lo looks like he took a digger right there. Uh, now, uh, yeah, we'll miss Devin. Uh, you know, great, great, uh, great way he's brought to the sport. And, uh, you know, uh, that's where he's happy. And it's more power to him. A lot of heart, a lot of uh, positive vibes, that's for sure. Uh, as we are two laps into this one, now approaching the one hour mark, just under the one hour mark at 55 and a half minutes. In reality, as we told you, Bryson Neal, Hunter Hart, Walker Fowler, one, two, and three have checked in. Uh, we saw a, a total of 32 seconds between Neal and Fowler, who are one and first and third right now. Cole Richardson has checked in 39 seconds behind Walker Fowler, John Glotta Jr. Now, 41 seconds, we saw him with some issues. We, we thought that he might have something bent the way he was uh, getting tossed around in the woods out there. Uh, still holding on to the number five spot after uh, two laps of racing complete, 27.05. Had about 10 seconds over uh, Adam McGill. Well, was about 10 seconds faster than Adam McGill, let's say. And uh, only about uh, six or so seconds ahead of him physically on the racetrack. Now Brandon Owens checking in in the number seven spot overall, leading the XC2 Pro-Am class. 
Uh, that uh, puts Jared McClure, who was running seventh in the pro class, now eighth overall. Austin Abney, who is uh, XC1 pro class rider, is eighth in Looks class, like ninth McClure overall. Got Abney. Abney was ahead of him going into that. When we see him during the lap, looks like the third guy around him. Okay, well, that, towards the end of that lap. Well, that right there was just what they just came through and checked in at the end of lap number two. So whatever they came through in like three minutes ago, that's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, like, he yeah, passed yeah, yeah. them. Yeah. So uh, anyway, um, we're looking at uh, Steve Harrell, Harrell in Either the either. number two spot, 10th place overall in the XC2 Pro Am, Wyatt Wilkin again, 11th overall. Is uh, third class Jay Shadron still back in the number four spot? He is now only 3.4 seconds back. He is turning about a six second faster lap than Wilkins, so it looks like uh, Jay Shadron's coming to play. It looked like Wilkins closed in on Darrell when we see him on a couple of the shots, like with it definitely within 10 seconds of him, and then uh, kind of just dropped off, so maybe that's what uh, Jay closed back in. But, uh, yeah, uh, that, that, that whole class it still seems pretty close. And then there's Vini on camera right now going by with the neon helmet, I believe. So right now, still early into uh, lap three, wrapping up lap two for a number of our classes out there right now. We should be seeing uh, soon more of our XC2 Pro-Am and of course the College A class riders checking in along with Vet A class shortly after that. You know, it's funny, you got, you know, we're always watching College A and Vet A. There are some junior A riders that do make the, the throw their hat in the rings in the mix sometimes. But it's funny how we got the young kid, the younger guys, and then the veterans, so to speak, that are vying for top overall amateurs out here and, and, and top 20 overall positions, which is incredible, incredibly impressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I think a lot of the guys that like once they hit the junior A age, they uh, they either go, they, a lot of them would go XC2. Um, just to try to push their pace and stuff. So that's why you don't see a lot of like the faster junior A guys are trying to push that are in the XC2 class. College A guys are trying to prove themselves in the amateur class and get going. And mm -hmm. That guy don't want to be messing around in that XC2. Absolutely. So uh, again, Neil Hart, Fowler, Richardson, and Claude your top five. Adam Gill in sixth, Jerry McClure in seventh, Austin Abney in eighth. Ronnie Rush ninth in the class after two, and Josh Merritt is 10th in the class. Johnny G. Gallagher and uh, Chris Porch in 11th and 12th. So Johnny Gallagher, from what I understand, he announced the early part of the season this would be his final season racing competitively as a pro, and at least in the pro class. So that means he's leaving the door open for him to be able to come back eventually in a few years and do some things. But, you know, one thing you can say, I don't expect Johnny Gallagher to go away from the scene of GNCC, but not a stretch of the imagination. Brandon Owen, Steve Harrell, Wyatt Wilkin, Jay Shandron, Grayson Eller, your top five, Daniel Peterson, six, Dylan Walraven in seventh. Still waiting on Tanner Walker in eighth, Chase Allison in ninth, and Cole Setzer to round out your top ten. As far as College A class riders are concerned, I expect that we're probably nearly due in, in seeing our leaders check in with those uh, second laps complete at the uh, one hour mark right now as you look at the race clock on racer tv so we are officially at the halfway point right now and lane mccormick with two laps of racing complete <laughs> he's already physically ahead of several of the xc2 pro-am class riders out there as he's gotten ahead of them on adjusted and physically out there uh, lane mccormick leading james galata a minute and 24 seconds separate those guys that's just hard to believe because I know how fast both of them are, and it's reflective in the fact, the mere fact that both of them are in or near the top 20 overall, even with a gap like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're both. They're, they're, no one else in Call J has checked out. They're just really, they're just, uh, they're, they're a step above, um, really pushing the pace of that amateur ranks. Uh, it's I like that Wayne's been building confidence. He's been doing really well the last few rounds. I think he's won like the last three amateur overalls call day class races. Um, he's just building confidence, getting faster every weekend. Love to see it. Big changes out there. Damian Hawkins, who had finally found his way and was able to finish a couple races, actually, I think, finished the top amateur position uh, overall last race uh, mm -hmm. was running in top three overall amateur there he was running third in the college a class two he's dropped back now keaton henderson's checking in third 
Alex uh, Tiemann in the number four spot, and Hawkins still yet to check in with two, and Mikey Wayne's down in the pits to check in on what's going on with Devin Feehan. Hey, thanks, guys. I know you saw it on Racer TV, the bike conditions. Let's get it. Bottom line is, I said, are you all right? He said, yeah, man, I'm good. Uh, wh what happened out there, Devin? Yeah, I don't know. Just right at the eight mile, uh, I noticed the front tire fold off to the side. So I think I just uh, hit a rut wrong, got into the ball joint pretty good. So nothing I could do about that. Just uh, some days that's how it goes. Some days that's how it goes. Hey, listen, rumor mill is this is it for Devin Feehan. After this year, you're hanging up the four wheels and you're going to two wheel. Now, not dirt bikes, cycling. Tell us about it. Yeah, that's what I've been up to. Uh, I've always enjoyed it a lot. Uh, obviously, I enjoy the heck out of this, and uh, it's been my dream to do it. But, uh, yeah, I just think it's it's uh, a good time to, to do some different things. So, Nothing wrong with that. You're going to come back once in a while, though, right? I mean, come on. I mean, I'll still be around. I'll, I'll be kicking. All right, fair enough. There you go. Devin, I know we're going to talk again these next couple rounds, man. Uh, good work. I'm glad you're okay. We'll put it that way. The bike, not so much. We'll take it back to you guys in the booth. All right, Mikey, thanks. I'm really liking that hair, dude. I'm, I'm trying to get mine grown out like that, but my girlfriend keeps saying, you need to get a haircut. You need to get a haircut. I, I, I can't do it. I, I like his I like wings, a little man. flow, but I can't, I can't be doing it. She told me it was me. She said, your hair's curling up too much in the back, honey. You ought to let me cut it. And I'm like, I'm trying to look like Mikey. <laughs> <laughs> Old big boy. So anyway, College A class, as we continue to look at that, uh, Hawkins has dropped as far back as six as he is still yet to check in. Running third early in the race, Dalton Keyes has now checked in in the number five spot. And Keyes has been a, was one of those riders that uh, I expected to be, again, a, a solid top five buying for top threes. And, He's done a little bit of that so far this season. Still looking for Trevor Furby as well, Cody Forrester, uh, Christopher Howard, and Parker Henderson to round out your top 10 in the College A class. So we'll check back in with those riders in just a few moments. There is Damian Hawkins checking in now in the number six spot, just uh, 15 seconds outside the top five. We'll take a look at more of the College A and some more of our amateur racing as well as XC1 Pro and XC2 Pro-Am. Can Rice Neal, hang on to the lead this one. Will Walker Fowler be able to bridge the gap and make something happen? Stick around to find out. GNCC Live continues after this. Last season was my best season ever by far. I won a lot of races. I won a championship, and it was my, also my first year using Arma. And one of the things I noticed was just my ability to string good days together. You know, like especially in the summertime in Florida where you're riding every day and the heat index is 108 degrees and you're doing 230s and going to the gym and bicycle and, and all that stuff. I think in the past I've been super inconsistent day to day. Yeah, I may have a, you know, a good race here or, you know, a good day during the week there. But overall, I think where I improved the most was my consistency in my recovery. Tires, a division of Greenball Corp, has been in the tire business for over 44 years. We're passionate about developing quality tires that perform great and bring extraordinary value to our customers. tire that can handle your off-road adventures, need a reliable tire to take you from job site to job site, or simply want a tire with a beefier look that won't break the bank, then check out Kanati Tires.
USMCA has been connecting riders to certified coaches since 2016. There are over 300 active certified coaches on MotorcycleCoaching.org, and we recently launched our new mobile app, making it easy to connect with a coach and book your next training session. So here's what you do. Download the Motorcycle Coaching app, then search for coaches in upcoming classes. Once a training session is booked, riders have the option to pay for their class and even get a calendar reminder that will automatically sync to their phone. Get connected today. Even when you're the best, you never stop striving to be better. With over 40 years of experience in motorcycle sales and service, we know racing. Our inventory of Yamaha motorcycles, sport bikes, dirt bikes, ATVs, and side-by-sides is extensive and constantly changing. Stop by Low Jack Cycle Sales today in Tarentum, Pennsylvania, and visit our online inventory at www.lowjacks.com. Yamaha YZ. It's why we ride. How would you like to go to a school where we take into consideration how students learn best? Well, we do that. Because we find if we can build the curriculum around the things you are interested in, you're going to do a better job. The mission at On Track School is that educational success is possible while chasing your dreams. Not only will our staff help students to achieve success, they will cheer you on to the finish line. We encourage you to check out On Track School at ontrackschool.com, where we can help you chase your dreams and still get a quality education. OnTrackSchool.com, check it out. And welcome back to GNCC Live on RacerTV.com. I'm Rodney Tom, along with uh, Cody Collier in booth with me and Mikey Waynes out and about uh, getting the scoop. Oh, Scoopy Wayne's out there. And, of course, uh, just talked with uh, Devin Feehan. Not only did we get the lowdown on the uh, issue that brought him back to the pits, but also uh, what his future plans are and uh, certainly wishing him well. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I mean, uh, kind of a little bit heartbroken to see him go because it seems like, you know, he's just right on the verge of that explosion and things really falling into place. We, we keep seeing great things uh, on the horizon for him. But uh, he's found a new passion and that's fine it's not fine, it's fine. <laughs> right we're, we're gonna we're gonna we, we're not gonna accept it but we're going to have to wish you well yeah so uh man here's something impressive i was doing a look here uh bryson neal six wins this season Ooh. so far Ooh. two thirds in a second oh mercy see that's <laughs> and, and, and i is there water on that rock? Is it getting splashed up? Is it making a slicker there? Is that what I going? I just think it's polished off. Just getting just polished, polished from everybody going through. Yeah. Well, one thing I was going to point out here, you know, we look at the big picture here. Two points separate these uh, riders for the championship. Bryson Neal with six wins on the season and a DNF. No points scored. Walker Fowler with only four wins on the season and one DNF, and he's only two points behind Walker Fowler, or behind Bryson Neal. You ask how that is, I'll tell you exactly how that is. Uh, Walker Fowler, when he hasn't finished uh, with the win, except for the one race that he DNF, um, of course, he has finished at least second place every time. The times that uh, Bryson Neal did not finish the win, did not win as far as the finish was concerned, he got two thirds and only one second. So that's what the difference is. At this particular point, Bryson could be looking at a little larger lead had he been able to get second places where those two number threes are right now. Otherwise, we're sitting here and a race win or even a second over a third at this particular point could change the uh, face of this championship and give us a new points leader at the end every, of the race day. Every point counts. Every point counts. Yeah, Cole was able to sneak by him in the last couple miles of the last race and get that second place from him. And, uh, yeah, Walker was said he was the biggest Cole Richardson fan that day. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I uh, kick out and here's Cole on screen right now. But uh, as we watch the leaders on screen going by while we were talking, um, it looked like Walker had actually closed in on Hart a little bit. And Hart had dropped off just a little bit from Neil. Um, but it looked like Bauer was closing in for that number two spot. So any any surprising results about the way things are, are, are scenarios, uh, any, anything that you see going on right now that is a surprise to you that you may have expected to see unfolding a little differently? Today? Yeah. Um, I, no, um, you know, uh, Walker and Neil out front, one of them chasing the other, a little bit of a gap. Um, you know, if they're not bar to bar, just a little bit of a gap, keeping each other honest. Um, 
you know, you always expect one of those other guys to be capable of throwing it in there, but you know it's going to be the Neil and Power show. Uh, Hart able to throw his, his hat in the ring today and uh, keep him honest for sure. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, no, everyone else is battling. Uh, everyone, all the top runners, you know, we got Richardson Jr., uh, Hart up front, uh, Miguel Solid, McClure, uh, add me after the last great run, hoping for a little better out of him today, but, you know, he's, uh, he's getting through the day great. Uh, Junior and McGill on screen here now in a nice little McGill's battle. caught back up to him. Yeah, yeah, after he smacked, smacked that true. rock. That's yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. now he's uh, able to cue <laughs> off him. Um, keep him honest. No, uh, great racing out here today. Um, Bowen's leading the XC2 class. You know, you expect Jay Shad to be out front early, but uh, looks like uh, Bones is able to get away and run. Uh, Harrell and uh, that Wyatt and Jay Shad battle, you know, those are those are the top four guys in the XC2 class this year. have been pretty much every race. And uh, see them battling is uh, good stuff. Absolutely, and uh, right now we are working on lap three of what we anticipate to be a four-lap race. Riders running just under the 30-minute uh, mark. Oh, we're looking at the possibility of five. Yeah, that's true. We did have a 24-minute lap on the first lap, 22.50. Yeah, that right there would put us a little short, so we could see five laps out of this, unless it slows down on this on this I third lap. I don't think it will I, very I, much. I, no, uh, good, not at good, all. Good, uh, track's pretty open. Lappers able to get, get out of the way quickly. And there's a not a lot passing. of lap traffic. I mean, unfortunately, no. there's not a big group of riders out there today. Probably one of the smallest afternoon ATV races that I can remember, at least in recent history, with only a 125 in the afternoon race. But you know what is equally surprising to me is the fact that we had over 150 youth ATV riders. And used to, we were lucky to get 70. Now we've more than doubled the youth ATV. That's race. awesome. No, yeah. That's great. Great, yeah. Yeah, get, great to get the young blood in the sport. Yeah, yeah. Um, There's yeah, Mark. a lot of, a lot of the Wexford No XR series big around here. Got a lot of youth riders in those series. Um, yeah. So there goes Hart now trying to put the lay the chase down onto uh, the 241 machine there of Bryce and Neal. As you said, it looks like that gap, uh, the time gap has opened up a little bit between them. Uh, and it looks like that Walker Fowler may be bridging the gap some on the number two. This right here, a very technical section for these guys when you break it down, you know? Yeah, oh yeah, 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 this is very slick. Very slick, very, uh, very technical. Uh, but Walker definitely closing in on those guys. Well, there he is, he's got some lap traffic in between them as we watch Walker Fowler. Let's check in with his mechanic and Mikey Lane. Hey, thanks guys, down here with Mark Notman. Mark, uh, uh, we'll do a silly question first, then we'll get to the serious stuff. Talk to us, I, we thought it was a black chest protector. Uh, it turns out it's clear, the jersey underneath is black, so it looks black. W what the heck, we know Walker is just a superstitious guy. What the heck's going on here? Uh, we can't get a white one, so we're stuck with the clear, I guess. Uh, it was good luck last race, apparently not today. Apparently not today. So we're going to see in between maybe, the, uh, well, it's not counter chickens before they hatch, but Walker Fowler is going to get the white rattle can spray paint out before the next round then if things don't shape up here today. I've seen dumber stuff happen, so it's, it's, it's very possible. Uh, what's, what's going through the team's head right now? I know not in a good spot. Uh, needs a win, obviously, but if nothing else, he needs the finish right behind Bryson. He's not there right now. Hunter Hart's in the way. Yeah, Hunter's uh, running good. He's been able to pretty much stay right stay right with Bryson. Uh, Walker's, I think, about 20 seconds behind Hunter, so hopefully he can bridge that gap and at least get around Hunter and, uh, you know, get into the two spot for the day. We, we definitely need a second, you know, points are very valuable, uh, as you can tell this year, so uh, every point counts. All right, Mark, we'll let you get back to work, man. Thank you, as always. By the way, didn't he have some nice glasses courtesy of Yamaha and GBC? There you go. Somebody, you know, somebody, I know somebody needs a pair of those glasses, Mike. I don't know, but I'll see uh, what I can do. I, I, I know there's a whole TV crew over here that would love to have a pair of those glasses, just FYI. <laughs> Nine mile marker, not the number six. <laughs> That's a Merritt fan that we're watching there right now. Uh, but Bryson Neal, Hunter Hart, Walker Fowler, we saw him coming through this section. We saw Cole Richardson. While we were talking with Mark Notman, a little bit of a pro uh, problem coming through this section, Cole. Uh, excuse me, it, Cody. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Cole just a little slip up. Um, came in too hot, and uh, front front tires just pushed. Wasn't able to get in the get in the rut he wanted to. Um, well, made a little corrections and got got back going. It looks like uh, McGill's gotten around Junior here. We're getting a nice battle here for fifth. 
So this lane, this has completely changed since lap number one. I mean, all the riders were more on this side coming through this section of the track uh, closer to the camera side. Now they're they're getting down in that area where Bryson Neal didn't want to go last time. Remember that? Yeah, yeah where it was uh, – Mudfleet was trying to point them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, that line just developed. It was hard to see at first, I bet, and they just uh, weren't sure if they were able to trust it. They seen the rock. They knew that that was good, and uh, – Line just develops. They're able to see it. Oh, Bowen's actually two liter. Oh no. Oh no. See, and, and and right there, ooh, right there, that's where problems are starting to rise. That crevice, that water's getting washed up <laughs> on there, and it's made it even slicker. That was the question I asked a few moments ago. Are we getting water washed up there and in that mud and everything? It's making it greasier and harder to get up. We seen Walker Fowler even struggling there, spinning tires trying to get up over that ledge there. A lap or so ago. Yeah, or actually two meter brand Owens having all sorts of issues. Uh really trying look to like, send that section struggle like for traction. But JP uh, Pickens Jr. out there. I don't know if you saw that little fella, uh, uh big pop Pete Jeff Pickens' son. Oh, I've seen him. I, I did I was, he was he did donuts in every turn out there this morning on the start at, in that uh, youth race. It was hilarious. It was he, greasy this Yeah, morning. it was very greasy, but he somebody somebody said he sure can do the donuts and so I'm going to start calling him Donut, I think, and I'm going to get I him like a bunch it. of donuts. Yeah. I like so it. That's a good nickname, old Donut. Old Donut. Oh, here's Gray Bow for second developing here. Oh, uh, looks like Wyatt's brought the Harold Harrell. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go with Harrell. I like it. Oh, push it. Oh, push it. Man, that is really getting to be kind of uh, tough to get around. Look at that. I mean. And that, that white string, it does not. It will cut you. That, yeah. That's the, ooh, kind of rock there. Uh, that that white string is not. Um, it doesn't legal. break like the yellow banner. Uh -uh. No. It so is you twine. don't want to get tangled up in that. That's for sure. Oh, oh, Jay Shad. Man. So that line has become the line now. And uh, look at this here. Let's see squaring it up. Yep. Oh, we got a pass. Was that a pass? Is me? No. Uh, that was Ronnie Rosh getting around Jay okay. Shad. Yep. Run the number one. So wow, pretty impressive that uh, the way. Uh, Ronnie Rush squared that up and made that work for him. Bryson Neal is in, by the way, at 26-23. So he's got a good gap over Hart. An hour and 18 we'll Watch minutes. that Ronnie Rush pa pass happen before Hart checked in. And then Walker right there. So uh, Walker's in place for a second. Uh, I think he might sell for a did, second a day. Did the two-lap um, board come out that time around? Or? Yeah, I think it uh, probably should. We'll wait, we'll wait for Cole to check in here and follow him through the finish. Um, just check on it. Uh, that's a two-lap card in this hand. So it will be a four-lap race. No, five-lap race. That's the end of three. So it will be a five-lap race. Uh, 26 minutes on to, we'll call it an hour and 15 minutes. So 26 minutes onto that puts us just under the hour and 45-minute mark. So we will probably go just over two hours with uh, another two laps. So, uh, yeah, good call by the uh, race officials. They did the math there. This ain't their first dog and pony show. That's for no, dog on They shirts. made us do five laps this morning. These guys can do five <laughs> laps. It's, uh, the track is perfect for it as well, and it's perfect for a great and epic battle that continues Absolutely. here after three laps of racing. Bryson Neal leading Hunter Hart. Walker Fowler now about 38 seconds out of first place. Can he bridge the gap back? Will he make the challenge? What's going to happen at the end of this one? It is the Burr Oaks GNCC live from Millfield, Ohio. Brown's RV Superstore is family owned and operated and stake their reputation on offering you the finest RVs available in their McBee, South Carolina RV dealership. Brown's RV Superstore carries motor homes, fifth wheels, travel trailers, and toy haulers, and keep a huge inventory of new and used RVs in stock for you to choose from. They offer top dollar for your RV trade-in and help you get the RV financing you need. As a part of the GNCC family, Brown's RV Superstore, in partnership with Vengeance Toy Haulers, offers sponsorship packages for every level of racer with discounts and continued savings on your new toy hauler. Brown's RV Superstore has dedicated themselves to complete customer satisfaction specializing in providing a positive start to your rv adventure they look forward to customers coming back to share their tales from the road call brown's rv superstore today at 877-805-3658 or visit their website at brownsrvsuperstore.com where family fun begins We all have our reasons to accomplish, to work hard.
We share a common goal to be the best. Keep fighting, put in the work, never take the easy way. Your drive and determination fuels our passion. This week in Yamaha history takes us back to the 2007 Powerline Park GNCC in St. Clairsville, Ohio. It was an early October fall when riders like Charlie Mullins getting the early lead on his Yamaha and riders like Jimmy Jarrett from Ohio and Pro Yamaha's Barry Hawk, Australia's Glenn Kearney, New Zealand's Paul Wibley, Ohio's Robbie Jinks, and the Isle of Man's David Knight and more reign supreme. Ampro Racing Yamaha's Charlie Mullins had grabbed the early lead and set sail on what he had hoped to be a win in his home state of Ohio. Lurking in the background some 30 seconds back through most of the race was David Knight, who had come from the Isle of Man to claim this championship after dominating the world enduro scene in Europe. Jimmy Jarrett moved into the number three position following behind the number three of Charlie Mullins. Mullins, who had dropped to the number two position after David Knight taking the lead on lap number four, and Mullins back to the number two position. A quick pit stop for David Knight, and the hammer was laid down, as was the gauntlet. Mullins tried as he may to bridge the gap, but could not do so, eventually succumbing to issues and falling out of the race, leaving riders like Barry Hawk on his Yamaha to defend the honor. A dry and dusty and very rocky race course in St. Clairsville, Ohio, left a lot of challenges for a lot of folks. But David Knight met every challenge and conquered every obstacle that day, taking the win by four minutes and 20 seconds over the rest of the field. As David Knight showed his dominance that day, another battle was ensuing back for the number two position. As Ohio's Jimmy Jarrett was able to capture the second place position with not far behind the number two of Barry Hawk on on his Ampro Yamaha, and that's this week in Yamaha history. And of course, here at uh, the John, uh, excuse me, at the Russell Family Farm, we welcome you back on GNCC Live, picking the action up here at the Kanati Tires Burr Oak GNCC, where Bryson Neal, after three laps of racing has amassed pretty much a dominant role as far as today is concerned. Now over 35 seconds ahead of Hunter Hart. Walker Fowler another four to five seconds back in the number three spot. Cole Richards in another minute and 10 seconds. So these front three really starting to, to pull away from everyone out there right now, Cody Collier. And Bryson Neal seemingly pulling ahead of everyone else. His lap time, 26.23. It was actually about 20 seconds faster, almost 30 seconds faster than Hunter Hart's, but only but three seconds faster. Bowers than Bowers. passed Hart here, but he didn't take pit last lap. So now he's got pit, lose that spot to Hart again. Got to put the charge back on. Yeah, and a little splash of fuel. Back at it. Yeah, just like I said, I mean, he was only three seconds off the pace of what uh, 
Bryson Neal was running out there, so it, it's not a fact that Walker Fowler is slowing anything out. His, he's staying about exactly where he has been all race, right around 30 seconds. Just I mean, didn't get that start, they didn't get that position, and now it, it's hard to make up that gap. It is, you know, and oftentimes you say a start is not as critical in GNCC unless you're racing against somebody like Walker Fowler or Bryson Neal. When, when you're riding the edge like that, two guys at the top of their game riding the same pace, you got the guys that are at the, at the same level week in and week out, um, it's tough. It, it really is. And we, we've seen it happen. Once mistakes start happening, it seems like they compound. So the riders that we've seen on camera, one little mistake leads to another mistake, which leads to another. But to be able to ride seemingly flawless like what we're seeing these front three run, riders run right now is pretty impressive. And, and even, ta even though Walker did get around Hunter, I'm still saying that the same thing about uh, about Hunter because oh, yeah. uh, he's making some 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 big strides here in this 2022 season. Made big strides in 2021 as well. And at the end of this season, man, when he looks back on this one, uh, he may not feel as happy about it. He may be wearing the number three at the end of the season, if that be the case. You see, I dropped back a number, but the one thing that you really got to take into account is the big picture. The big picture is is that Hunter Hart has had a phenomenal season so far you, the, overall. The, the, the thing is you got to stay learning, stay growing every race. Uh, just stay learning, uh, stay hungry. Um, he, he's, yeah, he, he's learning every race. Uh, last week he did really well. Um, he's just trying to get on the same level as these guys. He's just off pace these guys when they're on when Walker and uh, Beanie are on 100% on, are on like they are today. Walker's uh, hard strum dropped off of Neil and Walker's closed in. Uh, he's a couple things being right there with these guys. Interesting. It out. Interestingly, only, he, well, 10, 11 points separating uh, the uh, fourth and fifth place position point holders behind Hunter Hart right now. John Glotta Jr. is 10 points behind and only one more point back behind John Glotta with 160 points is Cole Richardson. Devin Feehan, who is out, has 160 points. So he was into that thick of things and the possibility for a bid for a top three overall, but today may take his hat out of the ring. And then the next so. rider in hand would be uh, Jay Shadron back there. Well, he's actually about 20 points back behind those guys. I thought he was a little closer than that. My glasses <laughs> deceiving me there for a moment. But Jay Shadron is running, I think, what is that, sixth overall? Uh, in the standings whenever you look very, at Very, very, very consistent. Got that podium at Snowshoe. Um, yeah, just been there. Finished every race, I believe. Well, it says seventh right here, but after today, we'll likely be sixth because of Devin Behan's mishaps. But uh, very impressive already capturing the XC2 Pro-Am uh, championship. And uh, I'd heard that, you know, he may be looking at dabbling in some XC1 class stuff, uh, maybe. Oh, yeah, get back, with his old, get, back, get back with his old run partners. Yeah, and, and I like the way that he transitioned. He came back, and it kind of went back to the grassroots level of it through the Junior A into the, the XC2, and now looking like going into the uh, XC1 Pro class, where we had seen him a handful of years ago uh, when he retired, basically, kind of just stepped away from everything. And uh, uh, so good to see the Shadron name back on the roster here at the GNCC, and good to see him working uh, in, in, in doing things and putting it all together the way that he wants to, you know, not that he didn't, but, you know, he, he came through the ranks as a kid. He probably didn't know what he wanted, didn't know what it meant to him until he had a chance to step away and then get it all sorted out. Yep. It happens like that sometimes. I mean, you got to take it away before you realize what you lost. And right now, folks, with Bryce and Neil out front of this one, how much bigger can that gap get? Will Walker Fowler, now that he's got that fresh splash of gas, be able to bridge that gap? He looks like he's got his head down and charging. We'll have to, have to wait around and find out to see if that's going to happen or not. We are live in Millfield, Ohio. You are watching RacerTV.com. It is the Kanati Tires Baroque GNCC Live. Tires, a division of Greenball Corp, has been in the tire business for over 44 years. We're passionate about developing quality tires that perform great and bring extraordinary value to our customers.
Whether you're looking for a tire that can handle your off-road adventures, need a reliable tire to take you from job site to job site, or simply want a tire with a beefier look that won't break the bank, then check out Kanati Tires. Born of family values and a homegrown work ethic, Kemetic Gasket seals your machine so you can focus on the finish line. Kemetic Gaskets are the competitive standard for racers who demand the very best. Kemetic Gaskets are constructed from superior materials designed to perform in the most demanding environment. Whether it's championships on the line or a day in the dirt with friends, professionals and enthusiasts depend on Kemetic. Kemetic Gaskets sealing championships since 1989. Amsoil runs on freedom and has since 1972. We punish our products firsthand in our world-class laboratories and beyond because some things can't be learned from a test tube. Run with us. USMCA has been connecting riders to certified coaches since 2016. There are over 300 active certified coaches on MotorcycleCoaching.org, and we recently launched our new mobile app, making it easy to connect with a coach and book your next training session. So here's what you do. Download the Motorcycle Coaching app, then search for coaches in upcoming classes. Once a training session is booked, riders have the option to pay for their class and even get a calendar reminder that will automatically sync to their phone. Get connected today. And look back to 2021 and the Burr Oaks GNCC here at Sunday Creek Raceway in Millfield, Ohio. The green flag waved on this one, got off to the start. It was Walker Fowler grabbing gears and the early lead with that uh, number three machine right behind them on that day. And who was running the number three last Cole Richardson. Year? Cole Richardson, that's right. And of course, uh, always that uh, threat and always that uh, person that's knocking Kurt on the door. So uh, riders, uh, you know, pretty much this race day, they seem to be a little bit not as intense as what they were on today's start. I don't think we've seen them running this tight after about mile number two. But as uh, this race wore on, Walker Fowler, as he always does, begins to put the hammer down a little bit, begins to start to see a little bit of daylight. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, that little bit of daylight becomes... The whole I, afternoon. Yeah, and I don't, I don't think Beniel was racing then. So like, uh, Walker to have Beniel run with them, and then these younger guys are still coming to their own. Then this pass on the outside was just awesome by Feehan around the outside carrying that momentum. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, these these younger guys are really coming into their own. It'll be a year or two, but they'll be coming. Yeah, Walker, or excuse me, Devin Feehan last year at this time had some amazing runs going. Uh, memory serves me correct. I remember uh, Walker Fowler and uh, Bryce Neal actually got together. Yeah, this is Feehan so, and uh, Fowler last year. I really thought Feehan was coming for him. I thought he had him. I thought I thought he had something for well, him. Walker I, able to hang on to it. Yeah, well, I tell you, like we said, you know, they got together there, and there's uh, a lot of uh, things going on. But Devin Feehan uh, actually coming away with second place last year in that one. And, 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 again, I remember that pass. When I saw that come up there, I remember how excited I got whenever I watched Devin Feehan. I thought, this is it. This is the Devin we've been waiting for. He's finally, he's finally here. And we saw that throughout the rest of the season. You know, we saw some more glimpses of great things like that. But again, I guess hearts change. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just, uh, I, I feel for him. It just, uh, you know, there's a race, this race is hard to race at that level to do it that consistently at that level, every single corner, lap, bump, everything. It's uh, one little mistake, one little mishap, just one little injury making you feel off and not being able to build that confidence. And uh, you, 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 Devin's had flashes of just greatness and uh just one thing or another just kept him from being s super consistent with it Bryce O'Neill on screen now one thing to point out we didn't see results from Bryce O'Neill at Burrow 2021 if you remember we were here at John Penton and he had that season ending injury and uh so back up to uh speed here in 2022 and uh, I have to think you know I, 
I, I, I wondered if, if Bryson would be a little more calculated after that incident uh, last year. And, and at first I began to think, I don't think he is, but you know, the more I watch him this year, Cody, I think he, he probably has things a little more calculated than what we realize. Hey, you know, you grow every race. Uh, that's, uh, that's the plan at least. You know, that's what, that's what each driver wants is to grow every race. And Bryson's coming into the race where he wants to be and he's leading points, doing what he needs to do. Um, Keeping the champ at bay, got got a good gap. Walker's repass Hart here, um, so Walker's going to see what he can do with about a lap and a half here, a little less than a lap and a half. Um, I got us less than maybe eight eight minutes, seven uh, eight nine minutes or so, seven and a half minutes is what timing and scoring is saying right now. So around that eight nine minute time frame, I think we can expect to see Bryson Neal checking in at the finish line. We'll get a a pretty good perspective on what Walker Fowler has been able to do over the course of the lap. Remember, he made that stop. Uh, he got around Hunter Hart, then Hunter Hart got back around him. I would have to assume with the momentum and uh, the way things were going, Walker probably did bridge the gap back, made the pass on uh, Hunter. And my question is at this point, has he been able to bridge any of the gap on uh, the 241 machine of Bryson Hill, and, and, and if so, how much of that gap is he chipping away at? I will, if, if he could pull 10 seconds of slap, get around down to that 20 second mark, uh, now he's got around hard, already done the pit stop. Um, you'll see, uh, see, see what uh, Fowler feels like doing today. Wonders, <laughs> uh, see, see what they do. So how long has it been? See, we've seen uh, Neil going through there. What Do we know what the distance between he and uh, Walker was? I didn't have a clock on him, so. I, it looked like it was a 20 to 30. Was that Richardson going? That through? was Richardson there in our fourth place position. Um, man, I believe he had a decent little gap back to that junior uh, McGill battle. Yeah, it looked like uh, Glotta was on his way. Uh, you know, he'd gotten around uh, the Gator and was starting to bridge quite a bit of a gap over the 521 machine. And then and we saw it on Cole. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then we saw that just those couple of strings of little mistakes that uh, cost him greatly and that tightened things back up with Adam. So now, you know, uh, all that time that he made up and, and there may still be lingering problems that he's battling with right now. And just as well. mentally to hit something that hard or that early in the race just really uh, takes it out of you, you know, yeah. um, it really jars you and then it kind of just throws off your rhythm. Um, might be hard finding back that groove he had, maybe not as comfortable taking taking a seat back and just trying to get through the day after something like that. It's a, uh, um, the, the little mistakes add up mentally. You just gotta be able to get beyond them and uh, ho hopefully nothing's wrong with Junior. Hopefully it was just a jar and he's able to move on. Now we're 39 minutes into this race, uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of about four minutes. We should be expecting to see. We're at the nine mile marker there, I think, with our leaders heading in now. So th no, uh, the thing I like about this section is where that orange squad just went, they can see, you could see almost 15, 20 seconds of track here. So if Walker's any kind of close, you'll be able to, Absolutely. especially coming down, see Walker, with Bryson going away as we see Bryson come on screen right now. Yep, so there goes Bryson, and I think he's out of sight now. So, no, he's back in sight again. <laughs> You're right. We do get to see a bunch of it there. So it you, the, Walker will be able, will more than likely be able to see about how far back he is from Bryson right here, unless Bryson's just out of sight, which is what Bryson wants. That's exactly what Bryson is banking on and hoping for right now and still no sign of that number one that I'm seeing nope. right now. So he's not going to get to see him through this section right here. No, Bryson's, uh, so, Bryson's pulled a nice little gap for himself. Yeah, so not not able to bridge a gap like what we kind of thought the possibility could be. Uh, again, pointing out the fact not a lot of lap traffic out there today. Now, the ones that they run into, I'm sure, are going to be some issues if they're in the wrong places but uh, not a lot of lap riders that these guys are gonna have to contend with. And uh, here we go. I think that was 30 or 40 seconds right there. Big gap. Not you know what I'm getting to do. Get, trying to get power motivated, get him going. So, Hart, Hart's just trying to keep yeah. him in tow, key off him. Hopefully uh, fall him to the front. Hope uh some bad luck from lappers or whoever it may be for Bryson and just try to be there. Definitely a uh, good place for Hunter Hart to be in, especially if uh, Walker Fowler can catch uh, some wind and some 
get some speed going and start to bridge that gap. But like you said, I think we're still well over the 30 second range, still in that 35 second uh, time frame that we were looking at the conclusion of lap number three, which at that particular point means that Walker has gained a few seconds, but at the same time, he's not gained nearly enough to put himself in a position to, well, put pressure on Bryson Neal mentally knowing that he's uh, closing the gap or anything like that right now uh, bryson if he's getting any pit boards i'm sure it's it's remaining steady at the uh, that 30 seconds plus and that's going to make him feel comfortable yeah he's just uh he just knows he's got to hold that pace and make walker come to him see if walker force walker into pushing that pace and force him to stay hopefully or uh um yeah bryson bryson's got this race right where he wants it and i think walker's just uh i well, I don't know what's going through Walker's head. I don't know if he's going to be pushing for it or just going to take the second, walk away clean, healthy, and uh, fight fight again next time. Cole Richardson checking in here at the nine-mile marker now as he still holds on to the number four spot. So a gap be it back to the number five position. Should be in the neighborhood of about a minute and ten seconds as Adam McGill has gotten around John Glotta Jr. Glute Jr. has dropped about 12 seconds off the pace then but as important as that i think we ought to note that brandon owens has moved into a sixth place overall time adjusted uh, time adjusted position there from the xc2 pro am class uh, row two starter there so he is sixth overall and continuing to uh, climb his way through the pack Harrell, the 908 back in 10th overall with Wyatt Wilkins still running in the number 11 spot. There's one minute, one second separating first and second in that class and only 14 seconds separating second and third. Yeah, it looks like uh, Bowens is about half a second off of that fifth overall spot. Yeah, actually he is. If you look at elapsed time right now, 121. He's 11 seconds out of a top five position right now. Okay, okay. So if he can bridge 11 more seconds on. Was that half a second over junior? Yeah. You're okay, okay, I was I yeah. was one down. I got Yeah, that. I'm looking at elapsed time right here. Yeah, that's what I was looking at too. I must have just been one down yeah. where I was looking at right. Bellins versus junior. I got you. That's easy to do. My, it's really easy. <laughs> yeah, when there's yeah, tw 20 numbers, it's hard to pick out which one's five and six. I, I myself, being an old fellow like myself, I want a bigger mo TV monitor and I want a bigger computer monitor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I th it's in the budget. Come on. We can set that up right now. Uh, I'm done at the end of this year. No need to. No need to oh, not your problem, huh? <laughs> not not oh, your well, problem. They're, they're, they don't have to pacify me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, I, I got to tell you, folks, uh, haven't talked a lot about it, but as we draw night to the, the end of this season, I, I'm not going to lie to you. It's uh, it, it's going to be hard uh, to not be around next year, that's for sure. But uh, uh, certainly enjoying these final rounds of my career anyway and, of course, of this uh, 2022 Grand National Cross Country Championship as we are watching for our leaders here at the FMF PowerPoint. Still being led by Bryson Neal. We're going to actually try to put it. Actually, we're at the finish line now. So Bryson has uh, already bridged that, made it through there. He's at the, uh, I guess this will be closer to the 12 now as he checks in. Four laps. fast. And missed him. He's uh, running like lightning out there today. So Bryson Neal, the bid well bullet. White flag is out and is in search of another win here in his home track in Millfield at uh, the Sunday Creek Raceway. And I'll tell you, folks, this right here will be the momentum shifter that he is needing with two more rounds of racing left to go. And knowing the uh, intensity of not only the battles that will lie ahead, but the intensity of the anxiety that he will be feeling, that he, that Walker Fowler will be feeling as these final two rounds approach. And Puts eventually... Puts him in must-win situations. If Bryson comes out one today, he's got to win the next two to really win this championship if that's the situation absolutely and four laps down a 26 37 lap time there for bryson neal again 35 or 34.2 seconds was the gap we were looking at between hunter hart and bryson neal who was running second at the end of lap three fowler was another four seconds back and at the end of four fowler now is 2.2 seconds ahead of hunter hart but 41.6 seconds behind bryson neal Take into account, we did have a pit stop there 
for Hunter Hart that last time around. But even in that situation, if you take 10 seconds off that lap time, he would have only gained about four seconds on him. So it wasn't really enough to make any. Yeah, you can't really call dance. that chipping away at it or anything. No. That's just. Uh, that's just so you're only a lot of laps at four Bryson seconds. Bryson backed off a couple of turns and didn't get on the gas in a couple of turns. You know, little uh, little things, little little things like that that I could uh, certainly tell that tell that little tape. But uh, you know, if they were a little closer, then that might start to to add up. But right now, uh, with one lap to go, uh, we'll see whether it matters or not. Especially when you're looking at 41.6 seconds to separate these riders. Yeah, I know Walker's trying to keep his eyes forward, but he's got that that, uh, that little Hunter Hart behind him buzzing. Uh, all over him, um, gonna, gonna push Hart, uh, power to the finish. So this should, if I'm not mistaken, and I calculate this right, if Bryson Neal is able to hang on to the win, and if Walker Fowler is able to hang on to second, that would then increase the point lead for Bryson Neal by seven over Walker Fowler, the seven-time GNCC champion. Increase it to seven, add five points to the two. That's what I yeah, said. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, I believe so. <laughs> Wasn't that what I said? Yeah, the, wor the wording was a little I was jiffy, but no, it, we're it good. would increase it to straight. seven points. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which yeah you increased by seven points. You increased two, like, two seven points. All right. You're, I just, I want to make sure we're all good here. You're no, no, no. Okay, make sure we get the <laughs> get out of here, would make you? Make sure we get the, <laughs> the math right for our audience. No, no, we're good. Uh, no, no it's uh, seven points. That's what I said. We'll be seven points ahead. Yes. All right. So <laughs> with a white flag out here now, uh, we got. Uh, one lap to go, less than 20 minutes or so that we have to go out here, or right at that 20 minute mark. Uh, Cole Richardson, Adam McGill, those are your fourth and fifth place riders, but the one that we are watching as well, as much as anything, is the 246 machine, your leader of the XC2 Pro Am class. As he was looking, and we were thinking, Cody, that he may have already bridged the time gap to be into that top five overall position. Remember, it was right around 10 seconds that we were looking at. And we'll see this time, did uh, will, did he do that? Will he be able to do it? Or did Adam maybe find that little extra oomph there in lap number four that uh, might keep that uh, bridge gapped? Yeah, and it's a five-lap race, too, you know. See who has the, uh, the attrition to stay with it for five laps. This, uh, this last lap's the one that matters. Yeah. Uh, no, but no, uh, I think uh, Brand will be right there, if not ahead of Adam. Um, I, I expect to see Owens ahead of him here, but uh, I don't know. If, uh, we'll see how if he holds on for five laps. That's a hard one, you know, yeah. and, and even though and here's the time the now and here's and, and we've talked about this before as the white flag flies for the uh, more riders out here. The thing that, you know, the time is not that much different. We may be five or 10 minutes over the two hour mark. And that's what you guys are training for, what you use, what they're used to and, and, and what they're expecting. But they're used to doing that in four laps. And for some reason, that fifth lap always seems to play a little bit of a mind game on riders. It's mental. It's all mental. You're just yeah, it's uh, it's just weird doing that extra lap. It's just you're not ready for it. Your body says, "All right, I've done four laps. I'm done. Let me <laughs> let me rest." They're like, "What do you mean, white flag?" And you gotta you gotta go out and do one more at pace. Yeah. And uh, you know, it's it's the same amount of work, pretty much. It just feels so much longer because you're doing it one extra time. Now, in, in that cir circumstance, in that situation, though, you feel like that mentally. Are you feeling like that physically at that point? Maybe at first, you kind of brush it off. I. I, I, I I don't know. I think that's more mental approach, how you mentally approach right. that. You can get more of spurts than other, other riders, get more Absolutely. of a spur of energy back than others. But, uh, um, Absolutely. yeah, just uh, don't, don't quit to that checkered flag flies. That's <laughs> it. That's it for me. I, I, I'm staying moving at, at pace until I see that checkered flag. Absolutely. White flag, and, and you know you got one more to go, or you hope, because sometimes if you think about it, that white flag is only a courtesy. Sometimes you can see it twice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't, I didn't see the two-lap card at the last round. Oh, really? Yeah. So were you surprised when you saw the white flag? Yes, because I was expecting a five-lap race, and they ended up just making it a four-lap race. So in a situation like that, how does that give you an extra spurt of energy? you think you got more energy in the in, in bank like that at that particular um, point mentally? It, it kind of throws you off because you're trying to pace yourself, and everyone else is also pacing their self. So everyone else can just sprint that white – you just get that white flag out and over. It's like, oh, I, I was expecting two laps. I'm ready to sprint. I can sprint this whole last lap, just the mental approach to it. Yeah, I got so. you. Yeah, but then again, if like whenever you come in, if you do get a double white flag, I'm sure you don't have a lot of energy on the <laughs> second white flag. 
<laughs> that does have to take a lot of yeah and i haven't really ever seen that happen in gncc more on the moto side of things than you you see it in gncc but again that white flag is just a courtesy flag i mean that you don't even have to see the white flag it doesn't even have to be flown for a checker flag to fly to end the race so fair yeah you know, so uh, I but think if we feel like it you can get like <laughs> We're but, nice enough. Well, it's a courtesy yeah, thing, yeah, you no, know. No. no, I mean, and they do that because oftentimes there are things that change, you know, and they 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 they've got to have that in there for that reason, that that rule, if you will. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, man, I, I I again am just really stoked. I mean. I, I'm waiting. I we're waiting on the leaders right here. I want to try to put a clock. If you got a stopwatch, I'll try to find one here. Dude, Bryson already went by. I okay. thought that was him. I wasn't sure, but there was a uh, hard going in the woods as we were panning away there. I thought that was uh, there. That, there was our leaders there, Walker and Hart, as we pan away. Check out this uh, beautiful, beautiful raceway we got here. And that's parking all down the middle. Used to be a big moto track. Got rid of that. Needed needed the space for. For us, us guys. Yeah. Imagine that. There's Beanie on screen now, that, that high vis helmet. Square up the slapper. All they're going is give him the splash of five laps. That's okay. He's got he's got the time for it. Get him out of there. Oh, yeah. Don't want to take any unnecessary chances. That's for sure. A little splash and go. Man, I mean, take one last deep breath. Just about how much back to it. But how much confidence does it give you when you do that? And you don't even have to worry about the guy sneaking around the corner on you and, and, and sliding one in, you know, and, and stealing a, a win away. I mean, that was so calm, so cool, and just a little splash, and put it back on, a little leisurely. Very professional. Yeah, Very it was. Very professional. Very smooth. And here's that. Uh, Fowler has got a lap driver between himself and Hart now, looks like. Ooh, there's Hart on the screen. Looks like he made a mistake. No, Drop I, back just a little bit there. You noted the dust earlier being kind of a thin dust that you can see through. Are you, are you thinking? As you can see on screen now. Yeah. It's gotten a little bit thicker as, as the sun's been out and the day goes on. And then we've but gotten down still, to more of a hard pack. But still, it's not very thick. They can see right through this. Right. Not, not too bad at all. Might put some grit in your teeth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have some crusty boogies and all that good stuff, but not nothing too bad. Not not hurting visibility too bad. Too yeah, bad. I mean we've seen some. You know, the amazing thing, obviously, being here at this facility for since 1990, it's the longest standing uh, uh, race on the circuit right now. And of course, with that, you've seen probably about every variable that. that and we race here twice a year. On yeah. top of that. Yeah. So I mean, you're seeing. Uh, yeah. So you, yeah, it's like you said, you're increasing the chances of everything whenever that happens. So. I've seen some of the, d the dustiest uh, powdery plumed, uh, you know, that uh, talc powder dust. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's got we, three foot, like it seems like sand almost on the outside well, of the corner. Well, actually so. like like baby powder, really. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's so it's even thinner than that. And, and those are the ones that you suck that sealed up into your motor and you know, the motors are dying and choking out, air filters are getting, but man, uh, today, I mean, the, I think the rain this morning probably was uh, a yeah, lot. Uh, it, did, it definitely did. It was unexpected. A lot of people were a little shocked. I, we might have got two tenths if we got that much, maybe a tenth of an inch of rain, but it was enough to put a little moisture on the ground. Mm -hmm. Yeah, keep the dust down at least for us. Got got some got some puddles going. Got some uh, got some moisture in the dirt. Um, I don't think it ra rained here all week, and uh, no, it, it, it needed it. It yeah. turned out for a beautiful day of racing, and we we're happy to have it. It's been a beautiful uh, beautiful day. I, I'm just an hour or so, about 50 miles just east of or west of here. And uh, it's been beautiful. All the weather that I get, it kind of comes this way. So it, it's been a beautiful week. Uh, like I said, mid 90s on on Wednesday, dropped to like 70 on Thursday. So fall, when fall fell and autumn came, so did the, the the temperatures came. That's the first time I've ever seen fall come on time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was weird. Wednesday morning, I had my AC going to work, and then uh, Thursday, I had the heat. It's weird. <laughs> Mile marker number five. We are not far away from uh, crowning a winner of this Kanati Tires Baroque GNCC. 16 minutes, I'm gonna say about as close to 15 minutes uh, as uh, as much as anything right now. So about 15 minutes or so out, we'll be uh, determining who was able to go the entire way. Uh, when we checked in an hour and 44.2, was where we were, add another 26 on to that, uh, 15, 20. So we're probably gonna be close to the two hour, seven minute mark. 
Right, right at 210. A little, a little shy of 210. Right, yeah. Yeah, that, that's what I'm thinking. But for some reason, I'm, 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 I always like to chip away a couple minutes at that because they're I've cooking. learned. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've learned to play. do that. I, I've gotten bitten a couple times because sometimes, but yeah, we'll, we're between 207, 210 uh, is what we're going to see. That's what I'm guesstimating lap time. I wouldn't expect to go over 210 for sure. I want to see the Walker's lap time right here. It looks like he's putting on Dude, he's absolute charge. Uh, lap of the race right here from Walker Power. There's Hunter Hart checking in a couple of lap riders in between he and Fowler now, but still a good pace by the number two machine. Oh, absolutely. Not, nothing to be ashamed of today. The only, the only two feet, two people that are like 30 seconds fast in you today are the two best quad riders on the planet. You know, absolutely. It's, uh, it, it just keep, keep picking away at it, dude. It should be demoralizing, but I can't say that it won't be frustrating. Frustrating is <laughs> the right word for it, for sure. Because, uh, 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 like what we were talking about, like I was a, I was a top 10 guy, and I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to make up a minute and a lap on these guys. And I, I, I don't know how much faster it is to go, you know? And uh, at Hunter, Hunter's just trying to figure out how to make up 10 seconds a lap. <laughs> and, uh, God, I can only uh, under, imagine how frustrating that is be right there yeah, yeah he's he's figuring it out though come a long way in the last couple years been very consistent being up there almost every single race um like i said uh, the young guys really coming into form you got the colt you know cole's a little bit of a vet now but he's really coming to form having some bright showings juniors coming to form um devin feeham sad to see him go but you know uh uh, he was really coming to form. Uh, Jay Shad on the on the rise. Uh, Wyatt Wilkin uh, looking to see him step up in the next couple of years. Uh, always always inter interesting to see when Merritt puts together a good ride. Mm -hmm. And uh, another rider I don't think we've seen a lot out of yet. And there's I think more to come from is Ronnie Rush, the 714. I think that this kid probably packs a bigger punch than maybe what a lot of people are giving him credit for. The way it looks like he does. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Since he's made that, made, made that step in the XC1, we, we saw what kind of punch he had in the XC2, but give him a couple more years to get his, his feet wet and really get this sorted out. We might see a whole different scenario start to it's, run. It's right. mental for him. You know, he was, he was coming from being a top running XC2 guy, and then, uh, you know, every everything he was doing, it was like touching gold. He was just... Uh, he, just everything he was doing was right winning races, picking through, hiring the top 10 overalls. Mm -hmm. And now when you get to the XC1 class, it's like, I, I got ninth? Like, <laughs> it, it's just so tough, you yeah. know. It, it's, uh, it, it's mental. So he'll, uh, he'll grow. He'll get used to it. And he's, he's put some, some good rides together throughout the year. Uh, look, look for more consistency, more consistency out of him next year. Well, Walker Fowler appears to be on the move right now as he's solidly into the number two spot, laying chase to Bryson Neal. You're less than 15 minutes out from checkers right now. Can Walker Fowler bridge the gap? You're in tune to the Kanati Tires Baroque GNCC. Even when you're the best, you never stop striving to be better. With over 40 years of experience in motorcycle sales and service, we know racing. Our inventory of Yamaha motorcycles, sport bikes, dirt bikes, ATVs, and side-by-sides is extensive and constantly changing. Stop by Low Jack Cycle Sales today in Tarentum, Pennsylvania, and visit our online inventory at www.lowjacks.com. Yamaha YZs, it's why we ride. How would you like to go to a school where we take into consideration how students learn best? Well, we do that. Because we find if we can build the curriculum around the things you are interested in, you're going to do a better job. The mission at On Track School is that educational success is possible while chasing your dreams. Not only will our staff help students to achieve success, they will cheer you on to the finish line. We encourage you to check out On Track School at ontrackschool.com, where we can help you chase your dreams and still get a quality education. OnTrackSchool.com, check it out. Brown's RV Superstore is family owned and operated and staked their reputation on offering you the finest RVs available in their McBee, South Carolina RV dealership. Brown's RV Superstore carries motorhomes, fifth wheels, travel trailers, and toy haulers, and keep a huge inventory of new and used RVs in stock for you to choose from. They offer top dollar for your RV trade-in and help you get the RV financing you need. As a part of the GNCC family, Brown's RV Superstore, in partnership with Vengeance Toy Haulers, offers sponsorship packages for every level of racer with discounts and continued savings on your new toy hauler. Brown's RV Superstore has dedicated themselves to complete customer satisfaction specializing in providing a positive start to your rv adventure they look forward to customers coming back to share their tales from the road 
Call Brown's RV Superstore today at 877-805-3658 or visit their website at brownsrvsuperstore.com, where family fun begins. Amsoil runs on freedom and has since 1972. We punish our products firsthand in our world-class laboratories and beyond because some things can't be learned from a test tube. Run with us. Last season was my best season ever by far. I won a lot of races, I won a championship, and it was my, also my first year using Arma. And one of the things I noticed was just my ability to string good days together. You know, like especially in the summertime in Florida where you're riding every day and the heat index is 108 degrees and you're doing 230s and going to the gym and bicycle and, and all that stuff. I think in the past I've been super inconsistent day to day. Yeah, I may have a, you know, a good race here or, you know, a good day during the week there. But overall, I think where I improved the most was my consistency in my recovery. of family values and a homegrown work ethic, Kemetic Gasket seals your machine so you can focus on the finish line. Kemetic Gaskets are the competitive standard for racers who demand the very best. Kemetic Gaskets are constructed from superior materials designed to perform in the most demanding environment. Whether it's championships on the line or a day in the dirt with friends, professionals and enthusiasts depend on Kemetic. Kemetic Gaskets sealing championships since 1989. Amsoil runs on freedom and has since 1972. We punish our products firsthand in our world-class laboratories and beyond because some things can't be learned from a test tube. Run with us. This Racer TV broadcast is brought to you by Specialized. Specialized Turbo E-Bikes. It's you, only faster. And by Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Get ready. And welcome back to GNCC Live on RacerTV.com. Rodney Tomlin here along with uh, Cody Collier, our 4x4 Pro Class uh, Championship contender here. And of course, uh, Mikey Wayne's out and about and uh, we'll be heading down to the podium to uh, celebrate uh, with some folks coming up here shortly. We are watching at the nine mile marker, been probably one of the trickiest places on the track. I gotta say, it looks like, I mean, it looks like it can be a little bit challenging, but I don't know that looking at it, you would expect the troubles that we've seen in this part of the track, Cody Collier. Just surprisingly slick, just uh, catching everyone off guard, you know. Um, Fool me once kind of thing. You know, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. And they're uh, trying not to get bit twice. There's a, uh, this is probably the trickiest section on the track. There's one more uh, uphill section around the eight mile marker that was really tricky, really steep. Um, but uh, other than that, this course is very nice, very smooth, had great flow to it. And uh, these guys are having a lot of fun. Absolutely. Seen riders, uh, you know, clipping trees, coming out of there, getting caught in the crevices, doing donuts, going up through there. Lots of time lost through there. So. Uh, uh, seen uh, Bryson Neal nearly run over a person. <laughs> so a lot of action going on there at the nine mile marker today. So uh, Bryson Neal, last check we know, uh, still out front of this one, Walker Fowler, somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 seconds. 
41 was what we were looking at at the end of lap number four. At the end of lap number five, I don't know that we've gotten a, a really good account of what the gap is, but I got to be honest, Cody, I don't think I've seen a monumental gap, even though there, it, it, it seems like there's some of it being chipped away. I don't know that it has been enough to, to really matter at this point. Unless something's happened off camera that we have. Walker's seen. trying to do everything he can to be as close as he can be in case something happens, trying to put himself in position. position. And uh, sometimes all you can do is all you can do. Hopefully something happens. And uh, yeah. if yeah. not, Walker can say he tried. Yeah. You know? Hoping to get lucky, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Making, yeah. And making his own luck. I'm saying that in a sense. You know, Joe Bird used to make the statement as Bryce Neal makes his way in I'd rather be lucky as good on any day. And I did get what he was saying for quite some time. And then I and then I realized what he meant by that. And the fact is, is that he makes his own luck and he'd rather have the opportunity to have more luck than to just to be good at that. You know, he wants to be good and have opportunities coming from different directions. The report is 14 seconds and there is Walker Fowler. Ooh. So that gap has been bridged some 20 seconds now, more than 20 seconds. Actually, we're talking about 25 second bridging of Walker Fowler now on the number 241 of the Bidwell Bullet, Bryson Neal. The big question is, at the nine-mile marker, will he have enough time to bridge the gap now? And if he can get on the rear grab bar of Bryson Neal, will he be able to put himself in a position to make the pass? At this particular point, you know, it may be a little demoralizing from the standpoint to say, hey, Bry uh, excuse me, that uh, Walker Fowler caught me from Bryson Neal's perspective, but at the same time, the only thing he has to think about is finishing ahead, whether it's one second, one minute, or one hour. Yeah, 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 yeah. A uh, win's a win. Uh, first place, first place doesn't matter if it's by an hour or a second. Um, yeah, the, the, they're just focused on points. Um, but uh, Walker being able to run Bryson down like this does huge things for confidence, though. Yeah, uh, coming into the next round, Walker be able to make up 40 seconds in one lap. You don't think that will be in everyone's and head a little bit? It'll be in his head. It'll be so. in Bryson's head. And uh, both of them will chew on that over the course of uh, the next two weeks as uh, we get set for uh, where we're heading to Newburgh, West Virginia for the Buckwheat 100 here in just uh, a couple of weeks, a few weeks. And, of course, uh, Pretty excited about that one. That one's kind of a newer venue on the circuit, but I love the coziness and the the uh, grassroots feel that we have at that particular property. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's got flowy up and down hills. It's got some good rock gardens here and there. It's nice, nice terrain. Um, not too open in a lot. Of, it's actually uh, it's old the, school GNCC. It seems a lot like. Yeah, yeah. They they drop us off to the cow pastures every now and then, which I could go without <laughs> and get it go into a patty every now and then. But uh, literally. Uh, but uh, the, the the fields there, they do a really Really great job with making them feel slowly and tight and smooth and making the, the feels that they have there technical. Um, I really enjoy that track. I, I did get to race the first year we ran it. I was injured. But, first year uh, I ran it last year. First year, you know, I walked in and I thought, man, this place seems so small, but it felt so cozy. And, you know, the racing was pretty good. Then, then, I mean, it's just really, I think it is, uh, to me, it's becoming one of my favorite stops just because of the coziness of it and the great racing atmosphere it presents. Yeah, yeah, it makes for great racing. Uh, like like you said, it's almost all in the woods. Here's Cole Richardson, our fourth place rider, checking in. Man, he's um, held a steady race today. You gotta you gotta give it up for him. Yeah, five laps, sticking with it. Um, uh, yeah, I don't think he's lost more than like 15, 20 seconds a lap on the leaders every lap. He's just been he's been put plugging in, putting in his laps, putting in us all day. And, it, and it's been one of those scenarios, just trying to you know again where you got to try to keep those guys in sight. There he is your leader. On his way home to the checkers and the win here as we check live from uh, the, the Yamaha drone there high above. And, you know, you, you can see him riding fast, but right now he's not really pushing himself. He's not running like, like uh, you know, like he knows or realizes that Walker Fowler is only 14, 15 seconds behind. He's riding right now to get to the finish line, to get to the checker flag. He's at the 11 mile marker. We're a mile or less now to the finish line itself. So he is right in great position to make things happen the way that he wants them to and increase that lead to seven points over. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> that's no, all right. good. All no, good. No, I was good. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, and, and that's what that's that's the idea. Come into this, increase the points lead. Definitely didn't want to get that big chunk taken away that he had just a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, I'm not going to lie. I had to wonder would that get in his head or 
or not. I know it was obviously in, like we talked about, he was in Walker's head. He came in with a head full of confidence about it. There's no doubt about that. But Bryson did not let it change the way that he felt coming in. Yeah, uh, maybe maybe, maybe mentally wasn't 100% there, but when he got that great start, him and Hunter won two in the woods, um, I'm sure it kind of changed confidence almost instantly for him. And he's put together this great ride here today. Uh, I, there's only like another half mile from where we last saw him to the finish, so I, I think Bryson's going to walk, walk in here with this win and uh, extend that points lead. Thank for for exciting last two rounds. Like we said, uh, that puts Walker in a must-win situation for the last two rounds. He's got to he's got to win a race, and Bryson gets second for five points. There he and, is, uh, two walk. points in the last round. And the 241 of Bryson Neal crosses the finish line at his home track to take another win. Seven here in the 2022 championship season and increases his point lead over the second place now ride of the number one of Walker Fowler, 2-7. As a slight shrug of the shoulders from Walker Fowler and a whole different body language from the number one as opposed to what we saw just two short weeks ago when he came across that finish line on an ultimate high, uh, knowing that he had just won that one. So, man, like you said, it's uh, getting interesting if Bryson Neal is to finish second, at least second in the next two rounds in order for Walker Fowler to win the championship. He's got to win both of these uh, next coming rounds. But we all know that uh, it's going to get interesting. With two rounds of racing to go. Both these riders are uh, wearing uh, a heavy weight on their shoulders. Uh, of course, the, the weight of wanting to win that championship for Bryson Neal, the weight of hanging on to that championship for uh, Walker Fowler, uh, is certainly it, it is going to play some big games, I think, over the course of the next month or so. By the time we see ourselves at the completion of the 13th round at the Ironman GNCC, we all may be standing around scratching our heads saying, Wow, what just happened? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Uh, Even Walker got good, Walker got a good swing in on the first round back from summer break, and then Cole was able to sneak in there and help out Walker, and then uh, Bryson swung back, and now they're just like, "What's up? Let's uh, let's see what happens." There's your third place ride, the number two of Hunter Hart, and, and you know, even with that, you know, we talk about errors in sports. I don't know if the Walker Fowler era, even losing, if he loses this championship, if we could deem it over just yet, I just think it intensifies the championship battle for next year. If truth I, be told. They're just two guys at the top of their game. It's uh, the, the Walker Fowler it'll still be, top it'll of his be, game. Just it'll nice be the Fowler them. era and then the Fowler Neal era that they'll share eventually. I guess is what yeah, we'll yeah, they'll, be they'll, at. they'll both be holding up that trophy. <laughs> no, 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 they're uh, they're just two Look guys in their prime. And, you just, know, we were talking see. <laughs> talking about body language and and things like that. Uh, uh, the, the, the the total flip, but we see Walker Fowler looking a lot like what Bryson Neal did two weeks ago. We see Bryson Neal looking a lot like what Walker Fowler did two weeks ago with a big smile on his face. And uh, you can see everybody in his ear giving him uh, the congratulations. Uh, and uh, a lot of folks really happy for, for Bryson Neal. I know a lot of uh, Gallia County folks are over uh, today, and uh, they're cheering him on. I'm pretty stoked about it. And, of course, uh, Dustin Byers, DB, one of his good buddies, a two-wheel racer, is uh, as stoked, I think, as anybody can be. And another guy that is stoked for himself is Bryson Neal, the Bidwell Bullet, who is standing by right now with Mikey Waynes. And Mikey is going to give us uh, an opportunity to see just exactly what it was like from Bryson Neal's perspective. Hey, thanks, guys. Yeah, down here with Bryson Neal, man. Uh, you needed to come out. You needed to win. Walker Fowler needed a win. It's mano a mano. You come out, you get the job done here in the home state, man. Talk us through it. Yeah, today today was the line of saying I, I couldn't give him three in a row. I was bleeding points. You know, um, I know it more than anyone, the, the points got that I had, and um, I just let it all go to waste. And uh, the last two races, they fought me. And, uh, man, these last two weeks, I was quiet. And uh, I really worked my butt off. I knew that this is the line of sand. I couldn't cut, let him come in here, beat me my home track in front of my, my home family, my friends, my Mexicans. And um, that start today, Toby Reed, back Hidwell, man. We, we worked all summer getting it, trying to get this bike started and trying to get me better. Uh, we made such improvements, and I was kicking myself because I didn't, I wasn't able to show that Beckley. He was able to show today my best start I've had all year. My goodness. I almost didn't know what to do because I was like, uh, I'm, I haven't been here, <laughs> and I almost wasn't racing forward. So uh, i got to shake them cobwebs next round if I get to get out front again like that. So uh, that was really great today. We got off the start. Shout out Toby Reed, Motor Experts, Pat Kidwell, BDO. 
Um, I, I'm just so pumped. The the, Mac, the CST tires, Elka shocks by Impact Solutions, EWT wheels, everything was clicking today. Uh, I know Walker uh, chiseled at points or the chiseled at the uh, gap on the last lap, but uh, I got to race this bike two more times, and I was just trying to get through it real smooth and uh, just get around real nice and easy, and uh, was able to bring this thing home. Bryce, it, uh, without a doubt, this round uh, with two left moving in, into uh, the last two rounds, this one very pivotal. How important was this race compared to all the others this year? Uh, today was do or die. Like I said, this is a line in the sand. I could not lose today. I couldn't give him three in a row. Uh, this is my hometown, and uh, this is... I did not want to lose here by all means, and I worked my tail off the last two weeks, and um, I'm just so happy that uh, everyone around me, my, my dad and uh, my Uncle Mike and Pat Kidwell and Toby Reed and, and uh, Justin Fallon, Chris Landers and the whole Magnum One team, I'm so happy that this summer we worked our butts off. We definitely improved the bike and made some good strides, and uh, we wasn't able to showcase it at Beckley, but we was uh, able to showcase it today, and the bike was kicking awesome, and uh, we're ready for two more. There you go. That's what we like to hear. Ready for two more. Your winner of the Baroque GNCC, Bryson. And with that, uh, Bryson Neal set seven points ahead of Walker Fowler. He's stoked. Everybody's stoked. The fans are stoked. Mikey Waynes, of course, uh, man, I, I know just to, to be down there and to feel that emotion, to feel that energy right now, you know that Mikey's got to be getting charged off of it right now. And, you know, going over to uh, Walker Fowler, I, I can't, you can't set, take anything away from the ride that Walker had today, especially that last lap and a half. He was able to, to, to get around uh, Hunter Hunter a couple different times and then bridge that gap. Uh, when we look at the official results, 13.8 seconds is all that separated Bryson Neal and Walker Fowler. Uh, Bryson Neal turned a 26.45, which was pretty consistent with what he had been turning the entire race. But check this out, a 26.17 for Walker Fowler. That was blistering fast on that last lap, dude. And I'm telling you, give it a little bit more time. You have to wonder, there have been another mile or two miles of racetrack out there. Could just Walker Fowler, a miles yeah, if he just started just a couple, yeah, just like you said, started a couple miles earlier, what would the outcome of this race be like? Uh, well, we'll never know the answer to that question, but we do know the answer to what today's race is, and that is Walker Fowler finishing up in the number two spot, and he is with Mikey Waynes. Thanks, Rodney. Yeah, hey, down here, Walker Fowler, uh, we come into today. You needed a win. Bryson Neal needed a win. Bryson edges you out, man. I know, not happy about that. I'm not unhappy about it. Uh, the first hour, I rode really poorly. I just, man, I don't I, I didn't, I didn't have it. I don't know. It was just something wasn't clicking. And, uh, man, we made a small shock adjustment. I kind of decided on what I raced the first two laps uh, at the house I thought would be better, and uh, I was wrong. So we made a quick change in the pits. Night and day difference, man. And that, that was a game changer. I had to make a, a game time decision, and usually those decisions don't work out. But uh, it did, man. I felt so good. I wish I had another lap. I finally felt like my old self just like last race and man i just i could just feel that that time just chipping away chip not even chipping away man i was coming hard like a freight train but uh two or three big mistakes the third and fourth lap uh cost me probably 20 seconds and those 20 seconds would have at least brought us to his rear wheels and try to force him to make a mistake or you know try to get a pass there but uh too little too late but i'm i'm very happy with how i rode the second half of the race um i have to be perfect the rest of the season if uh you know if we continue to go one two uh i, I know i got to run the next two races uh, i love cj raceway uh, you know, the Jennings family, uh, man, they just put on a, a great track there, so I'm really excited about that one. And then everyone knows that Ironman's a toss-up. It could be 100 degrees outside and dusty. It could be a deluge. It could, it could snow. Uh, who knows? So, uh, man, we're still in it. I'm healthy. Like I said, I rode really well that second half of the race. I wish I, I, wish I had it at the beginning for sure. There you go. Ray, Walker, what he's saying, he wants to go three hours. All right, that's he said no, no, that's not what I said. All right, that's going to do it. Walker Fowler taking second place here at the Burrow GNCC. All right, thanks a lot, Mikey. And wow, what a day. What a day. Riders, uh, uh, again, they, they know the scenario. They know the situation. Two rounds left to go in this one, and uh, it's on. Uh, you know, and, you know, we were talking there just – uh, a couple of well last race a couple weeks ago i think we made mention about the the possibility of walker fowler uh tying the uh, 75 
win record of uh, of Chris Boric here this season. I think that might have kind of slipped away there with uh, this particular race today, but we know we have that to look forward to coming up in 2023. So we got him back for next year. Yeah, you need to, you're, I don't I'm know. On. You're, are you? I can't hear you. <laughs> it's a, oh yeah, right, that's you me. pushed the wrong button. You yeah, were on, yeah, the, I wrong was on thing. the wrong one. My guy, bye bye guys. Yeah, yeah, no. So uh, we definitely got Walker back next year. Oh, here's the. Yeah, let's head on down to the. We'll talk about that in a moment. But let's head on down. Hunter Hart got third. Finishing in third place here today. This is where you belong. Fighting for podiums, fighting for wins. Today was the Hunter Hart we know you are. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, last weekend when we were in Burr Oak, you know, or we're here in Burr Oak this weekend uh, at Boy Scouts, I just uh, couldn't make a pass on a, couldn't get a pass done, and that was kind of what ended up happening to us there. And, uh, you know, today we weren't, uh, I wasn't messing around, you know, I wasn't going to put myself in a position to where I could get held up. And we basically got the whole shot and said, we're, we're going to run with it, boys. And uh, I think I led, oh, man, maybe five miles that first lap. Uh, Bryson got around me. And then um, he actually ended up tagging a tree or something. I ended up leading again. And then he got me back before we could be back in camera shot. And then I just kind of hung in there as tough as I could. And we, uh, we just um, didn't want to lose him today. And that was the goal. And, and we hung in tough. Bryson crept out a little bit on us in the dust. And then <clears throat> we ended up, uh, thankfully, Walker caught me. And it felt just like Monday when we were riding race bikes at his house. And uh, I was pretty stoked. He, uh, he pitted, actually, one more time than I did. So I got back by him. And then in the woods, he was right there, and I basically I, I took an inside, let him creep around the outside because I knew he'd be able to pull me home. And yeah, it was good. He pulled me, he pulled me all the way home, and he was cooking. You know, that last lap, I was, I knew I had a good gap over fourth, so I basically just rode conservatively. I was like, you know, Walker's Walker's gonna go, and I'm gonna I'm gonna just stick here and, and run at something I know I can I can manage, and that's what we did. Well, fantastic job! Congrats on the podium. Uh, when you look at this season. It's not over. We got two rounds of the year. We return to Iron Man. I believe your first XC1 win at Iron Man. Are we going to see somebody not named Bryson Neal, not named Walker Fowler, maybe somebody named Hunter Hart take an overall before the season's up? Uh, I can promise you, buddy. We've uh, we've been putting in the work, and I think last time we were here, Bryson got us by about two minutes and forty seconds, and uh, today it was uh, minute thirty. So we've uh, we, we've chipped away at it, and. You know, man, I uh, I'd like to. You know, I'd like to. I'd like to put in good run. You know, I, I show that I can run with them. I just need, man, just a little more at the end, and, and we're gonna we'll be there. You know, I just uh, it's those two are at the peak of their prime right now. They're they're both rolling, and uh, I just hope to be able to hang in there as long as I can. And if we can do that, we'll be in a good spot like today. There you go. Good work today. That is your third place finisher, the Baroque GNCC, Hunter Hart. Well, there he is, folks. Hunter Hart taking third place away here today. And, you know, some might say, doggone it, I got third. But uh, Hunter walks away with a head held high because, like you said, Cody Collier, he's battling the two fastest riders in the world in the woods today in Bryson Neal and Walker Fowler. They finish first and second. Hunter Hart takes third. Cole Richardson in fourth. Adam McGill holds on for the number five position. John Gaudet Jr. in sixth. That was a whale of a battle back there for those what, guys. What happened in XC2? <laughs> I don't know, but look Owens at that. Gone. Jay Shadron moves all the way up to I seven. That fifth lap with Duke Owens in. <laughs> I told you, I called it. So oh, Ben no. Bowen's having some problems there, unfortunately. He drops completely out of the top ten over Overall. Wyatt Wilkin moves into second. Steve Harrell drops off. Terrell drops back to the number 10 spot uh, overall. Jared McClure finishes ninth, and uh, he's XC1 rider, but that 7, 8, and 10 place positions, big changes there from the XC2 Pro Am class. And wow, what a day. Not sure what that's going to do for the championship in that class, but we'll certainly be watching out for that. There's no doubt about that. And speaking of watching out, be watching out for us as we'll be heading for Newburgh, West Virginia in just two weeks as this battle for the ATV GNCC title continues. And of course, we'll be at the Buckwheat 100 along with uh, Cody Collier and Mikey Waynes here from Millfield, Ohio. And this Kanadi Tires, Burroughs GNCC. I'm Rodney Tomlin. Have a great day, everybody.